Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Are you ready to witness something that you cannot explain? everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central Broadcasting Live from the bottom left-hand corner of the Nevada Triangle. My name is Jeffrey Gonzalez. I am your host for the show. I'm also the founder of a group called the Sanger Paranormal Society. has been exist- investigating the paranormal for over 10 years. Lost count already. I have a team that are all as whacked as I am. Uh, so uh, let's start off with... Actually, a new member of the team, I'd like to say, and substituting for our co-host, Alan Thomas, who is not feeling too good, and he is at home watching the show right now. Um, to my right, to your left, Mickey Burl, and uh, I want to actually, oh, never mind. And Manning, oh gosh, there I go, I did Manning. it again. Winning, womaning the board. Back in the corner of the Paranormal Central, we have Emerald Bonilla. Hi, everybody. And right now, we are waiting at any moment, Katy Perry, to hit the stage. Not yet. Um, she is going to be doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl. And I am looking forward to it. And you all who follow me know why. <laughs> um, but the theme is supposedly going to be UFOs. And we've got a lot of things going on in her halftime Super Bowl. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. Uh, she might start off with the clothing counters theme, I think. So if you're not watching the halftime show, tune in right now because uh, we're going to give you a play-by-play. Uh, we're going to wait until the halftime show finishes, and then we'll get a hold of Danny because I got a feeling there's going to be a lot of symbolism going on, and uh, I want everybody to see if you can catch it. If you got a pen and paper, start writing all the stuff down because eventually we're going to talk about it. I told you a month ago that as soon as I heard Katy Perry was going to be the halftime show, uh, doing the halftime show, I told you right away, there's going to be UFOs involved. I knew it, and I was right. So, can't wait to find out what it is. Um, Alan is, yeah, right. Um, Alan is at home, not doing so good. A couple days ago, he admitted himself to the ER. And um, all you guys know that he has RSD and uh, something was going on with his leg. And I think they gave him some drugs, but there's something going on. And I, I don't want to elaborate on what's going on on his leg. So when he comes back, I'll let him tell you guys. Uh, if you are friends with him on Facebook, then you guys have been updated because that's where he's been updated on his condition. But he's at home right now. He's kicking back. I'm hoping, relaxing. I know he's on chat. He should be on chat. So um, uh, if you guys want to say hi to him, he's on chat. And he'll be able to go ahead and respond back to you guys. So so like I said, right now, uh, we are waiting for Katy Perry to hit the stage. We have actually quite a bit to talk about tonight. Um, I don't know. For those who are following me on Facebook, you guys probably saw the Bigfoot stuff that that just occurred a couple days ago. And I don't want to start on it right now because I want to show you and I want to tell you the story how it all began because it's freaking amazing. And I know that you guys are going to trip out when I tell you exactly how we came to find the spot. Um, and now a second person 
has come forward and notified us. And it so happened that it's exactly the same spot <clears throat> down here on the valley floor. I was just going to say, is that on the valley floor? Yes, it's valley floor. Okay. Two people already. Okay. So that's right there is confirmation all the way. These people don't know each other. Okay. Two years apart. <laughs> it's crazy. Two years apart. Meaning the, from the first sighting and the second sighting, sighting, which is last week, two weeks ago. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so, and then found footprints. And uh, I'm, I want to get into it with you a little bit because, uh, like I said, we have so much to go. I don't want to start on a subject and then all of us have to stop and then continue on because it's, 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 you know, the story is just, wow. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this is a book. This, I mean, this is crazy. And I want to tell people and show people why is this happening to Sanger Paranormal Society? Why is this happening to Paranormal Central? And there's a reason for this. Is because we've been at it for a long time. I network. People have my number. My number is out there, and people are calling that number. And that's why I'm getting all of these cases because people are finding out this number and they're calling that number. That's how come I'm getting all these cases. And then one leads, you know, one, one thing leads to another. Then you find out, holy smokes, this is the same spot that we had deciding that, you know, a couple of years ago. Wow, you know, of all places, same place. Okay, and and again, we're gonna get into it. So, um, don't know the confirmation yet on Katy Perry. <laughs> so, <laughs> Emerald's giving me the eye over there. As you guys all know, Katy Perry's my girlfriend, and my wife is really? probably. Yeah, I was just gonna say, does your wife? Does my wife know? Uh, my wife is okay with it as long as she gets um, Jared from. Is that his name? Jared from Thirty Seconds of Mars. Will be. So. <laughs> So, Emerald, who's your uh, movie star crush, rock star crush? <laughs> oh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> really? Mickey, who's yours? Yeah. Spill it. Come on. Let me uh, narrow it down. Huh? Um, Catherine Zeta-Jones comes to mind. Huh. She's too old for me. I won't sell my hike if you like those type of women. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I kind of like. I think I know the kind of Kim, women you like because Kim of. K, uh, uh, who? Kim K is up there on who Kardashian. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, people are going, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So move the mic closer to you. Yeah. Yeah, that so. Kardashian girl. She's. <laughs> <laughs> so but right now, right now your fiance is going, Mickey. <laughs> 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 so for those who don't know who Mickey is, Mickey, introduce yourself. I'm Mickey Burrow. Um, I am Jeff's friend. Um, We're friends? We're friends, I you know, hope. Pick, pick, I up, pick, pick, pick up the mic and bring it closer to you, way closer to you. You got to, like, make out with it. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, swing the mic up like this. Bring the boom box. And, and literally, it's put it in front of your face. There you like go. Like that. There yeah. you go. Okay. <laughs> that's better. All right, go for it. Make out with it. I'm yeah, that's right. Far from making out with that. <laughs> um, I'm Mickey Burrow. I'm, I'm just friend. We've known each other for a few years now, and uh, I'm uh, in forensics. I am a law in, in law enforcement. Um been doing it for 18 years now um and uh i lend my expertise to jeff whenever he calls on me and uh also um in this case um sitting in for alan uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I mean last week you called in at the last minute and you said yeah. hey i took these pictures at pine flat lake i gotta show them to you and, and then incredible. you want and now you know, we were gonna show them and i said whoa wait a minute why don't you just come in today and then sit in here with us and then show them and then, you know, give everybody the description. Yep. Nice. And it just so happens that, unfortunately, Alan is out. So, you know, you're in. And I'm here. And Alan, so. I hope you are feeling better. Yes. So, um, so uh, and we'll talk about, um, you know, what happened at Pine Flat. Like, your expertise is in photography. Yes. Right? Yep. Um, obviously, forensics, meaning, and we're not going to say what law enforcement, obviously, but you are out there. Looking at dead bodies and all that, right? Yep. Yep. Dead yeah, I'm body. the the real CSI. You are the real CSI. So when there's a murder, a stabbing, uh, anything like that, you're out there marking all the bullets. You're um, taking pictures, taking fingerprints, blood yep. samples, and they call you in basically if they need you to testify in the court of law. Yep. I mean, as a matter of fact, you just went across the country for something like that, didn't you? Uh, it was uh, a sexual assault case in Michigan. It was last year. Okay. And it happened here? Uh, it was related to something that happened in the valley. Yeah. Okay. So, um, wow. Very cool. Um, 
All right. Uh, I'm looking at the TV. We got a massive. Well, I don't want to say massive. We got a TV in here, and Katy Perry's not on yet. So, uh, you know, okay. Well, <clears throat> let's go ahead and continue on. Just hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold Half on. time. Half, Half time. time. There we go. Half time show. Hold on. All right. Time out. So, okay. So, for those who are listening, oh, crap. Aww, commercial. Oh, crap. Yeah. So, for those who are That's listening smart. on Art Bell, um, we will. I will try to. I, I don't. You know, I don't really want to narrate the thing. But if there's any cool stuff, I'll. I'll go ahead and describe what we're what we're watching on on the screen. So, um, you know, in a little bit, you know, right now, for those who are watching us at livestream.com, obviously you're seeing our ugly mugs right now, and eventually we'll show you some pictures. And you can also see the pictures at artbell.com. It's starting. It's starting. Pepsi. Yeah, it's my drink. A UFO. Look at, look at, look at that commercial. Look at the yep. commercial. There look at the first day. Actually, you know what Pepsi did on Friday is they tried to um, imitate these the 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 Phoenix lights that occurred. I heard about that. Okay, I saw that today. They actually had balloons and they were going to let them go up, but FAA did not allow them to do it. This isn't a commercial. This is a show. No, it's a commercial. No, they took her wig. I missed it. The blue wig. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, the the uh, halftime show is starting. Obviously, Pepsi is the sponsor because all I see is Pepsi everywhere. All right, so um, I'm going to try to narrate it for you guys who are at Art Bell. And let's see. You know, I've, obviously, I can't listen. Is it starting off with Cold Encounters? She's talking. I like the cat. So she is on top of a very large animatronic Kitty type cat. of very cool. <gasps> it's moving. Holy smokes. Oh How much God. money did that cost to make? I want one. Can I have one, Jeff? Oh, <laughs> okay, I'll buy you one next week. <laughs> okay. Um, but that is pretty dang cool. That Obviously, Pepsi's, you know, forked up a lot of money for this. But uh, she's riding on a very large robotic animatronic um, Tiger. tiger. I think and it's, it's prob Oh, you it's, know what? It's, it's not. The people are moving it. See, on the bottom. Do you see the people at the very bottom? They're, they're just they're dressed moving in black. It. Yeah, they're moving it. So, so not, I still want one. But um, it's about it's about uh, 20 feet high. And she's at, literally at the very top. Like on the uh, collar, you know, holding it and trying. Like she's riding it, basically. So It's a tiger. It's a tiger, huh? Okay. With red eyes. Oh, symbolism right oh, there. Oh, shut up. Red eyes. She's singing yes, roar. I caught that. I red caught eyes. that. Huh? Red eyes. That's evil. What right does there. red eyes? Dark. Evil. Dark. I get red eyes when I'm tired. Yeah, you're dark. You're evil. You're Oprah. She's giving you Don't the even go right there. Now. Don't even go there. <laughs> we'll talk about that later on, too. No, we won't. Yeah, we will. I'm not going to start shit. Whatever. Shit. So this has got to be. This has got to be. Oh, that's this so has got to cool. be roar, right? Roar. Yeah, this is roar. Okay. I can't. We can't hear you guys. We have the volume down because you can't allow that to go over the air, because that's um, basically the copyrighted by the NFL, and we can't allow that to happen. So now she's singing Dark Horse. Dark Horse. All right. And Dark Horse, she's singing, and right now they are. She's on top of a platform of chess. Uh, just picture a large chess plane table, and uh, all the chess pieces are actually people dressed up. Uh, well, can I sing chess. along? Checkers. I know this song. Yeah. Whatever. And dark horse, and that makes sense because of the uh, the horse pieces, the knights, right? So I'm not a chess player, so I will get that right. Um, so right now she's singing on top of a very large lighted up chess table. And the chess pieces are people, and they're dancing around with her, and she's singing. Um, so far, I haven't seen anything with UFOs, which is... Except for the beginning with just the Pepsi the thing. Pepsi thing yeah. yeah. So hopefully something here will change because I my like sources were telling me that show. there was going to be some UFO action and some space and stuff that like that. That might have been it. Oh, that's kind of no, cool. It better not be. I'll be ticked off, man. So anyways, um, okay, there's Lenny Kravitz. He has a guitar. <gasps> He's going to be playing. I'm going to go inside and watch this. Whatever. <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube tomorrow. Trust me. You'll be able to see it on YouTube. Uh, so oh, no, just to let you guys know I'll know um, if you guys are chatting trying to get a hold of us Alan is usually the person who is on the chat and so uh, you know obviously he doesn't oh have okay they're saying the stadium was the UFO that landed that's uh, why it's circle really apparently that's boring 
I wanted something else to go on. What's mm -hmm. up with that? So, okay. Well, let's, uh, I believe the whole halftime show is about 12 minutes long, according to what Katie said. It's about 12 minutes long. So um, right now she is, you know, singing on stage with Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz is playing the guitar. And that's basically it. That's all going on right now. Nothing very exciting. I thought it would be more elaborate and more exciting than this. So, so far, it hasn't really been, you know, it hasn't met my expectations so far. That'd be funny if her wig fell off right about there. She's not wearing a wig. Yeah, she has. She has, she has short hair. Does she? Uh-huh. Oh, I don't know this stuff. <clears throat> I do. And you want to know why? Because you love you her. Know, that's right. You know all about her. That's right. You stalker. stalker. That's <laughs> <laughs> Both of you guys at the same time. Oh, man, you guys suck. All right. Um, now, what do we got? Oh, this has got to be, um, what song is this? Okay. California Girls. There you go. You know, okay. Look at Quick Change. So, right now she's on stage and she's wearing a very skimmy outfit, my kind of outfit. Oh my God, Jack. And she's on stage with a bunch of uh, dancing surfboards and pineapples and palm beach trees balls and, and beach sharks. Balls. Uh, yeah. I've seen California here. Wait, yeah. is this California girl? It has to be California girl. She said from her interview that it, it you know, her tour shows uh, it's about like about two hours long. She said it was just going to be basically her tour setup. And, and they're going to condense it to 12 minutes. Oh, no. This is Teenage Dream. Oh, Teenage Dream. Okay. Mm. I can't hear it. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying to... I got the... Um, the whatchamacallit on the uh, screen there. So, right now, Katy Perry is on stage and now, like I said, a different outfit. And it's more like of a bathing suit type of, you know, beach wear. And uh, she is singing with a bunch of beach balls and palms and <laughs> sharks. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, not meaning what I thought was going to happen. So it would be cool if a UFO came down and abducted her and took her away, then I would be happy. <laughs> so we got five minutes left. <laughs> uh, again, still in the same routine. She is surrounded by water in the ocean. Now she has some singing girls up there in bathing suits. So if you guys are not watching this, you guys should. And this is like right in the middle of the uh, stadium, obviously. Um, yeah, now this is California Girl. It's California Girl, yeah. So, so uh, at, you know, she is still on stage, guys. Sorry. I'm trying to narrate this for those who are listening in Art Bell. I apologize, but, you know, I wanted to watch this only because of some symbolism. She's really good at placing symbolisms in her music videos. And if you guys don't remember her, the Grammy performance she did a while back on Dark Horse, it was very dark very dark symbolism of Egyptian um, a lot of people said it was a a, a ritual a dark ritual uh, and it had all that in it I mean if you for all those who don't know what I'm talking about it's on YouTube it has to be on YouTube trust me I think it is on YouTube go in and and uh, you know look at it that's what there was the Grammy performance she did and it was very dark gloom evil looking Okay, so this particular just finished. Now they are looking at, I think it, this is What's Her Face. Um, I don't remember her name. I just found out um, found out today she was going to be on M Missy. What, what do you call Missy it? Elliott? Or? Yeah, Missy Elliott, yep. Yeah, she is now doing some dancing on stage. Oh, this is an old song. Is it? Okay, because I'm not familiar with her stuff and only you would. Oh, okay, Katy Perry is actually singing with her. 49. What does 49 stand for? 49. That's got to be something for it. Is there oh, a... Please. Huh? It's just a jersey. Well, there's got to be a number. I mean, everything she wears, or especially for something like this, it's got to symbol, symbolize something. But she's wearing a large coat, and it has the number 49, very large, on there. That's all she's wearing. That's why it's large. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, a large 49. So, people are going to now take that number and they're going to try to Google it and see what 49 signifies. Because obviously, the, it's a number. Is it is it the number of a what's on quarterback the, or something? Oh, maybe those, they'll say Missy on them on, their, on the yeah Missy. Okay. Um, but 49. So, uh, is that a date? A four nine? It's a number. <laughs> I know with the number, <laughs> but. Why, why 56? It's why? a Super Bowl number. 
49th state. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What Super Bowl 49th. is this? Is it 49th Super Bowl? I think so. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Here we're trying to figure out what it is. And it's the Super Can somebody say, is it, what number of Super Bowl is this? I think, it's, let me Google it. Somebody in chat, come on. Spill it. Yeah. No, yeah, Danny. I think that's Danny. Yeah, Danny says it's 49 Super Bowl. Oh, that's oh, stupid. There you go. Ha ha. Come you on. You were wrong. I, 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 wanted, I wanted the date to be it's like. It's not always paranormal. I wanted the date to be like uh, the doomsday date or something, but uh, it's a 49. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. It still can be. Oh, Jeff, just stop. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, you guys. I'm trying. I really am. Maybe there's nothing going to happen this time. Well, it's 49. Just remember the number it's 49. It's Super Bowl. <laughs> well, it could symbolize something else, too. I'm going to ruin Wait, your career, January, too. January, February, March, <laughs> April. So April the 9th. What? April, April, the, 9th. Really, April, April 9th. April the 9th, right? We'll figure out that something's going to happen April 9th. Okay, Missy Elliott is now... Waving goodbye. Waving goodbye. Um, how, how much time has that been so far? Hold on, hold on. All right, well, st still the halftime show and uh, whatever. It looks oh, that spaceshipy. Coat, that coat she had, she basically Stars. took it off. What is it? What is she singing now? Do you ever feel like a plastic? Oh, this is um one of my favorite songs actually. This is uh. Your firework, firework. No, firework. no, 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 no. This is um. It's not firework. No, God, no. Um. Uh, it was a great, great song. I have it on my iP iPhone here. Let me. Pull Am it. I wrong? I thought this was firework. Wide, wide awake. No, it's not. This is wide awake. No, it's not. I'm telling you, it's firework. No, it's wide awake. <laughs> no, Talk it's not. Do you want to bet right now? I will bet you 10 bucks. What do you think it was? There's fireworks. No, right. this is no, 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 no. This is wide awake. There's a UFO taking her away. Yeah. Shut, shut up, Mickey. It's triangle shape. <laughs> oh, ooh, 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 Mickey ooh. caught it. It's a triangle shape. <laughs> See, I told it. you See? it's firework. You owe me ten bucks. Fourth of July, cause baby. Oh, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I give you ten bucks. Damn it. Haha. <laughs> firework, so. dumbass. My wife just. <laughs> <laughs> my wife just texted me. It's firework, dumbass. <laughs> told you. So yeah, I All don't right, think there's right, nothing yeah, yeah. going on. I think this is just a, your regular awesome halftime show. Damn it. Because you know how I like to play. You know when attitude. I get her on. You know when I get her on the show, I'm gonna have to basically, you know cuss her out and say what the hell is wrong with you you had the opportunity of a lifetime in front of billions of people to basically give us a signal a sign that nibiru is coming around oh, that the aliens are here you know what you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying cool story bro the triangle's taking her away that's right but no that's a firework in the stars and according to my wife i'm a dumbass <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Yeah, well, I, I right. like Katy Perry better. Oh, she's gonna kill me for that one. Yes, yeah, she is. That's okay. I've been. Hit. They may throw in an the UFO at the end. You know, the UFO could come lay down. I, I don't know, think just, so because look at all the fireworks. This yeah, is like an end. Last this is probably song. an end. Yeah. This sucks. Especially this with is, her dress. I am very disappointed in Katy Perry. I'm gonna have to send her an email. Okay, I'm sure she'll read it. Yeah. God, when it's from Paranormal Central, I'm pretty sure she'll take it. I put it in the front of everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. Jeff Gonzalez, right too. Recycle bin. That guy's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> in the recycle Spam. bin. Spam. <laughs> junk. <laughs> Jeffrey, who? I don't. Don't have never heard of Paranormal Essential. The that's junk. Stupid name. Right. And that's it. Yep. Oh, you're <laughs> kidding me. You are kidding me. Jeff was let down mm. hard. Hard. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is. I'm disappointed. Um, not, see, I'm going to have to mute this for a couple of minutes, you guys. I am not all here right now. Oh, he's so sad. He's crying. Anyway, so let's get on with the show. So, um. So, okay. <laughs> so, um. You want to Kleenex? That, I'm going to yeah. call Danny so he can laugh at you now. <laughs> Plus, there all million people who are watching this right now, too. So, but uh, anyways, Mickey, uh, this is going to be your, your, your tune from now on when we want you on. Well, anyways, but, uh, but every time we have Mickey on and I want to bring on Mickey... going on here? Daddy's on. Daddy's on the phone? Daniel? Okay, we'll get Danny on. Never mind. <sighs> Danny. How come she gets paid? What? How come she gets paid? <laughs> How come she gets paid? Yeah, she gets ten she gets ten bucks. 
Because I, I bet that's all you're gonna pay her is ten bucks. That's all, he doesn't pay me nothing. <laughs> Why? What? What do you want, Danny? A slap? What you got? <laughs> hey, Danny. Hey, J- uh, Mickey. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'm disappointed right now. I am so let down. You I'm, missed the, the UFO that that went across the city and then landed there. It was it was the stadium though. See that that just. Uh, Wife, can you bring him some hard liquor so I can put in the soda for me, please? <laughs> She's too busy looking at Jared from Subway. <laughs> Is he on here? No, that uh, what's his face? That's uh, Rose. No. Okay. All right. Jared Leto. Okay, Jared Leto. Foot. Jared Leto's not on there. What are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. All right. Whatever. I'm disappointed. I am hurt. I am so hurt right now. It's not even funny. Okay. All right. Let's get on with the Squatch Report. For those who don't know, Danny Valdrama is our Harry Squatch Reporter, have oh. been for a long time. And uh, he is going to give us the, uh, the 10 cents on what's been going on in the past week. So, Mr. Danny Valdrama, for those who are looking at us right now, I'm going to put the pictures up one by one. And if you want to see the pictures, you can go to artbell.com. They will be on there as well and you can just follow along with Danny's report and we got the first one up and this just happened actually yesterday right no this oh, what picture do you want me to go first though tense okay that's right you had them backwards huh yeah I'll fire you tomorrow. I don't know how that happened there's too many of them okay. they get all jumbled all right go for it all right so hello everybody out there and for our Spanish speaking friends hello <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got. The, I, I got the. I got the one with the jeep and the tent on top. All right, this is uh, from the Genesqua Project Ohio page from January 30th, and this is a Bigfoot tent. It's a, a new type of tent that's coming out, and it's it's from a company in Huntington Beach, California. And these are rooftop tents, and they can fit on any uh, car or truck, and you can make all your dreams come true. You camp anywhere. No last minute motels. And, you know, you can, uh, it folds some of them up. There are different types of um, these that are, you're showing right now fold flat. So there are no poles to put up. You just uh, flip the switch and, and it raises up and you're ready to go. You can save on the space at the campground. And uh, for that little area that we have when we go, right? you can sleep right up on top of the car. Save so, the there. okay. So can this fit in back of a pickup? You know what? When it when it goes down flat, I didn't include the pictures because I had a lot already. Okay. But it just that's the size of it right there. The, oh. the little outline there. You just it just collapses straight down. So so I can sleep in there, and you guys can sleep on the floor. So it's like a pop up. Well, they actually have a picture in one of the pickups where they turn them sideways, and you can fit two up there. Oh, okay. So it, almost everybody could have their own. You can probably fit two on a roof on the big trucks. Okay. It seems kind of risky sleeping on top of a truck. What if you roll off? <laughs> they are hard shell, top and bottom. Okay. And then the fabric in the middle. So you won't have to worry about leaks or the tent blowing over in the middle of the night. And you won't have to worry about scorpions or critters or anything like that. Or bears. So, um, you know, but, you that. but isn't that such a perfect height for a Bigfoot to come looking into your eye? Uh, that's what I thought. That's, what they, yep. that's why they named the Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot so, so what's the name of this particular... Those are all Bigfoot tents. That's the name of the company. Ten, so you, you, he's at, you're pretty much at eye level with him now. Right, right. And that's kind of scary, don't you think? So if you go to the next picture, it's kind of a close-up. Okay. Yeah. It kind of looks like a casket. So if he yeah, does stick yeah, yeah. his head in there, you're pretty much dead. So you got a <laughs> casket already. <laughs> well, so much for sponsorship from this company now. <laughs> <laughs> the price on these is uh, between thirteen hundred and twenty six hundred. There's about six different styles that they have, or six different looking ones. There's two styles. Okay. One's the uh, soft top A frame type, and that's the last picture. It's kind of a, a bigger one right. with the ladder in the middle, and then the other ones are the hard shells, and they hold up to six hundred pounds. So you can get a Bigfoot in there. Yeah, among other things. All right, and uh, so, wow. Well. And they have a Facebook page, uh, Bigfoot Roof Rooftop Tents, or, or uh, BigfootTents.com. Okay, so then what we are looking at is if you have like a SUV type of vehicle, this will work fine. Yep, or a car, it says. So a car, huh? On some cars. Huh. Seems like you'd 
you slide off. You either slide off or make the roof collapse. Yeah, be because uh, you know, obviously, you probably need the the luggage rack as far as mm -hmm. tying down and so it doesn't go back and forth, right? Well, it says it comes with everything that you need to assemble it on the roof. So, oh, okay. I'm not sure how it, how it, they attach it on there, but. They, right. they send you everything you need. And there's plenty of pictures on their website, too. Okay. I think I'd rather sleep in the car instead of on the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, uh, yeah, okay. Well, all right. Something different. Yeah, something different. Um, that I show. And this is just the uh, actual logo uh, that I'm showing you right now. If you guys want to get more information on them. And we are not getting any sponsor or any money from these guys. It's just that when Danny finds something that needs to be you know, uh, told to you guys that he thinks it's cool, and which I think is cool. Why? Because it has the word Bigfoot in it. Right, Danny? Yep. That's it. <laughs> right on. Okay, man. What's next? The next one is a digital face. The digital face. All right. This is from yeah. January 26th, oh, also this. from the Genesquad Project okay. page. And this one has four pictures in it. And the first picture is, uh, this is a digital face created by Ruben Steindorf. It's from the Visual Realm company and use a 3d digital animation to create patty's face you remember Pat patty uh, is from the patterson gimlin film of 1967 mm -hmm. and you can see where he put the face you can still see the outline of her hair there so she kind of has like a human face okay i see a and lot then, of interpretation in this though yeah when i so. say interpretation i mean we're talking about an eight millimeter was it eight millimeter or 16 millimeter oh i don't know film you would know at, better than me at 16 probably At 40 oh. yards 30 yards whatever it was away i mean that's a that's going to be so grainy i mean how can they I how can they do that they, yeah so this is that. just one person's interpretation Interpret which it can yeah. mean absolutely nothing because from what i understand for those who believe in bigfoot bigfoots come in different sizes shapes different noses mouth you know some look like gorillas some look like monkeys some look like humans so it's you know but this particular one hey i don't know i wasn't there i didn't do it so there's a big lips and big nostrils. Kind of looks like a car window. I know. Uh, yeah, it does actually. Yeah. Very, yes, it does. And Mickey would definitely know about that because uh, Mickey is the one yeah. who swabbed and took pictures of the DNA for us. So, all right, what's next? So uh, the next picture is a Russian boxer. This is Nikolai Val Valiev. Okay. And he's a close match to the to the picture that was just up. And he is also seven feet tall, and that's about the same height that Patty was in the in the picture in the video from 1967 patty was about seven feet tall okay. except it wasn't this guy because he was born in 1973 right so you're saying that uh, the head formation on this guy is i don't want to say identical but it has some it's pretty close pretty close it has a sagittal crest on it okay so Let's go to another one i believe it's here and it, for scale, there's the next picture is uh, him with fighting Evander Holyfield. My God, he's huge. So how tall is he? You so said. he's he's seven feet tall. Evander Holyfield Oof. is six six two. Wait 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 wait. That's that, that can't be seven foot. That's got to be taller. Yeah. No, it says Holyfield's seven foot. putting his head down right now, so that's so he's ducking the punch. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be punched by him. That's for sure. So <laughs> I don't I, I don't remember this fight. Who won? It's 2008. Uh, he beat Evander Holyfield. Well, you think? <laughs> it, well, it was a it was a contra controversial fight because it went the distance, and the judges sided with him. It was in Switzerland. Ah, uh, decided to go to the bigger guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't see giving the fight to the smaller guy. I just I just can't see that happening. All right. So, What's next? So the uh, the sagittal crest on him is Grover Krantz believed was a size thing, not because most of the scientists believed that. The sagittal crest was on great apes, and like the uh, the silverback gorillas mm -hmm. would have a sagittal crest because they were larger than the females. But Grover Krantz believed that it was a height thing, and that's why Patty had it because she was bigger than most most uh, apes. So huh. she would have the sagittal crest, and that's that means that you have a powerful jaw, and it's used for uh, biting and uh, clenching of the teeth, which is part of the hunting strategy. Okay. So. And it, so you have strong jaw muscles, and you need that sagittal crest to attach to there to keep them because they're really strong. Right on. Okay. All right. So I put up the next picture. Weird. Danny, are you calling this guy an ape? Yeah. 
<laughs> I wouldn't want to talk I'm saying he's got a powerful jaw that he could probably rip you apart. <laughs> He's lucky that he didn't bite Evander Holyfield's ear. Oh, no kidding. No, he would have taken the whole side of the head. his head off. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. So, okay. Now let's go to the, the last one. Is the seven pictures. The Thinker Thunker, right? Yep. Okay. Seven pictures on this one? Yeah. Uh, oh, do I get them all? I don't know if I got them all. I'm pretty sure I do. You gave me a lot of pictures, though. All right. Number yeah. one. Let's go. So the title on this one is called Bigfoot versus a Buffalo, and it was a breakdown done by Think a Thunker, but I didn't want to show the video because it's like 12 or 18 minutes long or something like that, right. and I didn't want to blow you offline. <laughs> Got a new computer. So, yeah. All right, but go ahead and explain um, the, the whole video and where, where it's from and the whole, you know, everything. This is a Mary Greeley posted a video taken from a, there's a, like they have cameras set up around the park and you can go online and view the cameras. And, and some some of them you can move around yourself from home to look around the park. And this one was uh, aimed towards some buffalo. And she just posted it because she thought it was cool. And she never noticed the people in the background. So somebody sent it to Thinker Thunker, and uh, he spotted movement in the background. So he went through the whole video and, and showed when they came into frame at the very back of the mountain and slowly coming down the mountain at pretty fast speed which he said they got from point A to point B in record time, which was impossible for a human to do. And then the, you can see them getting closer to where the uh, buffalo were, and then one comes out by himself in kind of a weird walk, and he's saying that he's getting ready to attack the buffalo, and he, try, he tries to do a size comparison, and he says that the, uh, the human, or whatever it is, is, is twice the size of the buffalo. Right. So it's getting ready to attack. Now, see, you, dude, I only have one, two, three, four pictures for this particular. I have well, they're that. all up on um, okay, Arkell. Oh, I, I, that's the only one they got here. And I numbered them. I went straight down. One, two, three, four, five. So I got four pictures. Um, if Art Bell got them all, then they're on Art Bell's side if you want to see them. Um, but, okay. So uh, after the, the second one, uh, the third one that I have is just the people walking in single file. Yeah. So what that what that was when you, when they're going to point A to point B, the reason why they're moving so fast is because they're cross country skiers, and they're probably going downhill real quick. Okay. Now my my question is, um, you have geysers. I mean, obviously there were geysers there because this is Yellowstone National Park, all right. Mm -hmm. And you have the wild the you know the the wild buffalo or bison or whatever they were. Isn't this area fenced off? No, they they're free roaming. It's a open no, range but, park. Okay, but the, aren't, like, aren't like the are the geysers, is it hazardous? I mean, shouldn't they have like fences around those? Or yeah, something? they they have uh, walkways that you're supposed to stay on because it, the the water is boiling. <laughs> right, right. But hopefully, you're smart enough to know not to touch the water. And and that's why I'm thinking, you know, when Thinker Thunker did this, and everybody assumed it's like, okay, we're looking on the webcam and we're looking at the freaking geysers and the steam coming up all over the place, and all of a sudden these wild bison are are there. And then all of a sudden you have four, what it looks like, humans walking very rapidly on snow. Um, and right away I thought, okay, is this like a protective area where no people can, you know, trespass? Because that's why, you know, everybody thought they were Bigfoot. I thought right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, Michael Merchant um put on his uh, page a uh, map of the area okay and it is actually a, a cross-country ski trail yeah uh, okay and during the summer it's a regular trail for anybody who wants to use it and if he what the camera doesn't show is that it's actually hooked up to the inn so there's an inn and like a whole entire village right across from where this took place uh. so it's just a big it, it makes it kind of makes it look like it's out in the middle of nowhere that's what it does but it but it it's really right with all the tourists usually go during the summer okay and what tipped it off for me is when they're walking through the little opening in the in the trees the last person has a totally different color to him like he's wearing a light colored jacket and then if you watch the feet when the feet are going through they don't take a step like a normal person would take a step and right. you don't have the same knee bend that the bigfoot usually has right that we hear about so often right. like if you watch their feet when they take a step it slides forward it's like which a, is consistent with the ski. Like a forward moonwalk, kind of. 
Yeah, like it's kind of like a moonwalk, a forward moonwalk. But uh, if you watch their hands, too, even though you can't see the poles because they're so skinny and the, and the camera's so far back, you can't see the poles, but you can see their hands, and it does look like they are moving poles. Okay. And then when the guy goes out by himself, he has a weird walk when he's out there. Right. It's because he's only using one pole. If you watch his other hand, he's like holding a camera or something, and he's taking pictures, which is why he's he's trying to maneuver with only one arm and one pole. Mm. Okay. So it looks like he's holding on to the second pole. Okay. Well, So ba- I think this you, is just you, a misidentification. Ba- basically, out of everybody who was talking about this, you, you basically called it on this. Um, this. I saw it two times, and I said, wait a minute. When I saw that guy with the, the different color shirt, right. I said, wait, i got to take a closer look at this because this isn't what he's saying it is. Okay. So, and um, now, when you walk, I've walked with skis too, and it's hard to walk, and that's the exact way I walk with the skis on. Okay. Now, did Thinker Thunker pull it back, pull his, his you know, his um, theory yeah, I on this back? what I thought right. on his, under his YouTube video, and he hasn't responded to anything, so. Okay. Uh, but I did post it on the other pages too, and I didn't know Michael Merchant was seeing the same thing too. So it, it's pretty much the same exact thing that I saw that everybody else is seeing now. So did somebody say it was a Bigfoot? Yeah, think, yeah, um, think of Dunker. Yeah, this guy Thinker Dunker. Um, he did a lot of breakdowns. Yeah, he's been at it for a couple videos. of years now. And when somebody has a video, he'll grab it and he'll dissect it, and you know he's pretty good at what he does. But on this case here. Uh, I think he just a misidentification type of deal. Yeah. He goofed a little That's bit. That's all it so. is. I thought, I thought, I mean, boy, this looks good. This four Bigfoot. <laughs> but uh, I guess you really have to get in there and thank the Danny. He broke it down. And, good job, Danny. Right. And yeah. basically, I just have to say, you suck. <laughs> yeah, you were disappointed. When I, I was, you. man. No, like, damn no, it, no. this is awesome. Oh, my God, this is the best four Bigfoot. Kill it right now. They're, Watch. They're, yeah, they were no. going to go after the bison. They're going to tear it up and eat it. No, it's cross-country scares. <laughs> Sorry, he even fired me again. I did. I fired him three times that day. That's why you don't get paid. That's right. Yep. That's I funny. actually gave him a raise of double what he was making, and then I had to take it away. Whoa. Zero times zero, Jeff. That's right. It's zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next? So I get some football Catch players on here. I know. That's all of them. Huh? You, you, had, you didn't have all the pictures. So. You sent me some football ones. Oh, yeah, that the football ones. You were asking me why they all look so close together. But when you um, have the camera pointed that far away right? and the focal length changes, it has to smush everything, condense everything in there. So that's that's why from far away, if you look at that first football picture, okay, those guys look like they're touching shoulders. Oh, but oh, if you I were actually it. there with the next football picture, Right. You can see how far away they actually are. And this all you can walk through that number forty there can walk through the middle of those guys. And you can use this uh, this theory on the uh, Bigfoot that uh, David Ragosa got by the trees, because mm-hmm. if you go, I mean, I mean, looking at his side view, mm-hmm. it looks like he's up against a tree. But when you go in front, it's a big open space. When it's called compression of space. Whenever you have a a longer telephoto lens mm-hmm. on your camera uh, larger things think they t- they appear to be right on top of each other that's why when some you see some photographs where the moon looks huge against the foreground mm-hmm. um, it's not the foreground and the background and the background together the they, size. yeah they're the, they're they look relatively on the same size however because of the compression of space with the lens it appears to be the same size but they're not I mean obviously because you know, okay. the moon's Right. And when he, when Thinker Hunter right. did his size comparison, he also didn't take into consideration that the skiers were on skis above the snow, right? And the buffalo were sinking into the snow when they were walking. Yep. So they're heavy animals. Yes. All right. So prove that one. Right. Damn it. Sorry. Damn. He's just getting proved wrong. Dad, all today week. has just been an unlucky day. No Katy Perry UFO <laughs> abduction. No probing, Bigfoot. nothing like there that. There was a UFO, but it was just in the beginning. You yeah, it. yeah, that's, man, that's just not right. <laughs> not right at all. Okay, what else, man? Well, you, know, you got a Bigfoot out there to talk about. So. Yes, I do. So we'll talk about that next. All right, Danny. Yep. All right. Thank you very much, dude. We'll see you next week, all right? Okay. Okay, see thanks. You. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. See you, Danny. All right. Bigfoot. Okay. I am so excited, and I am so sorry, Alan, that you couldn't be here because Alan um, – you know, 
Bigfoot is Alan's, you know, cup of tea. That's his that's forte. that's forte. This is this is his thing. I mean, he loves freaking Bigfoot. All right. So let me tell you guys what happened. All right. On Wednesday, I was here at home taking care of my son who had a fever. He's barely getting over it. So I took off work and I stayed home at around three o'clock. Um, oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me, uh, at three o'clock. I got a call on my 24-hour hotline. And for all those who know, don't know, throw me that phone. I don't want to hit you. Go ahead. Okay. I've had this cell phone, a 5S, upgraded now to 5S, for... Ever. Ever. Going, I'm thinking I'm going on 12 years now. All right. I had this phone number going on 12 years since I first started the Sanger Paranormal Society. The phone number is... Five five nine two eight seven eight three six seven. The last four numbers represent the letters U F O S. I've had this forever. I've had it on business cards. I promoted the you know what out of this thing on the web, on the internet, on Facebook. This is where I get all my cases, mostly here and a lot of word of mouth. All right, because a lot of people out there in internet land are tripping out on what's going on with us. Because they're going, how in the heck are these guys getting so much cases, so much good evidence? It's because of this, guys, and the networking that we've been doing for so long. All right. Um, on Wednesday, I got a call, and the Clovis number came up on it. All right. So I answered it, and the guy was basically saying, hey, um, I need some information on Bigfoot. And I said, okay, go ahead. He goes, I, I he goes, I have a family of them around my home right now. And I'm going, whoa, 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 what? And he started to describe what was going on. And I said, well, first thing, where do you live? And then he paused a little bit and he said, Piedra Road. Okay, first of all, he said Piedra Road. And I said, okay, start telling me what's, what's going on. And he says, where he lives and and then actually he says do bigfoots come down to the bottom of the floor of, of 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 the valley floor and i said yes and then i proceeded to tell him why because the central san joaquin valley is the fruit basket of the world we have everything down here produce oranges nectarines figs peaches plums grapes everything okay we have everything down here and he says and I said, they come down here. And then I started to proceed to tell them where we have had sightings from people. And I said, we've had sightings. And I don't know if I've ever told you this, but we had two girls see one at Academy in California Avenue. We had one, uh, see, uh, we had two little boys see one at Zittaker and Ashland. So okay. All towards the east side. Yeah, east side. And then we actually had one as close as freaking Ashland or, or Shields and McCall. All right, and when you think about that, it's freaking unbelievable because we're talking near Clovis, man. And we're not talking the foothills. We're not talking the mountains. We're not talking six thousand feet elevation. We're talking here. I can get in my truck and I can be there in freaking ten minutes. Yeah. You know? All right. That's how freaking close these things are. And it's blown me away. It blew Ellen away when we got the first call with those two little boys two years ago. So, okay. Um, so, anyways, the guy's on the phone. And he's telling me, and I said, yes, they're down here, and they're eating because they're hungry, and they're coming down. They're eating all the, you know, the oranges. And then he paused for a minute, and he goes, man, I'm so glad I called you. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, I have tangerine and orange trees around my place. I'm going, well, that's why they're there. It's since season. I bet you they're freaking as juicy as heck. And he goes, yes, they are. We should go camping there. Well. I want to go. Okay. Okay. I'll check it out. All right. Now, so, um. So I, I, and then he started to tell me exactly what was going on. I said, whoa, 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 stop right there. Stop. I go, can we meet in person? Because I want to see you. I want to hear it come from you in person. And he goes, and I go, and this was Wednesday. And I said, mm -hmm. are you busy tonight? Can we meet someplace tonight? And he goes, well, I'm working right now and, and I don't get off at five. And I said, can we meet at seven o'clock? And, that, and I said, and I said, we'll go to you or, or I'll find a place. And he says, and then he paused a little bit. And I said, hey, um, let's go to Sanger. I'll meet someplace in Sanger. I said, how about the Me and Ed pizza place? And he says, okay. 
So I said, all right, which one, which mean as you want to go? The one south and north of, of Sanger. And I, and, and he said, how about the north at Bethel and, and, and Jensen? I said, fine. I'll, you know, I'm going to bring my co-host, Alan. We'll be there at, at seven o'clock. He said, awesome. So we'll see you there. So I hung up the phone. I'm all, no way. No way. So mm-hmm. he mentioned Piedra Road, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm getting freaking all excited. I mean, and, and I'm going to tell you why I'm getting excited because about a month, two months ago, three months ago, a picture was taken at Avocado Lake. And as a matter of fact, you, have you seen this one? No. Okay, I'm going to have to give it to you so you can analyze it. Anyways, it was at the Kings River near Avocado, and there's this thing that's running. And somebody took a picture and tweeted it to Matt uh, Moneymaker on the BFRO. And it got out on the internet, and it said, Avocado Lake, California. And I'm all, and, okay, well, let me show you that particular picture yeah, let me right see. now. This is what they sent right here. And I'm, and I'm showing it right now on live stream for all those two. Now, obviously it's blurry. Grainy as heck. It's very Long grainy, it's blurry as heck, okay. But let's talk about this just a uh, t- t- tiny bit because we've talked about this a lot. But those are the river rocks, mm-hmm. okay. Look at how his leg is bending, his back leg. See how okay. it's like Benny? Yeah. Okay. Being that we talk a lot about Bigfoot, we have come to realize how sort of how they walk. If you look at the Patterson Gimlin film, Patty, when he's walk, she's walking, her back legs lift up a certain degrees. Okay. Mm-hmm. Whether she's walking or running, it, it, it the back it comes up like this for some reason. All right. If you really think about this, this is all this is river rock boulders. If you or I were to go and start walking on this, then we'd, we'd be like, try not to mm-hmm. break our ankle, right? Yeah. Okay. This, whatever it is, has this back leg ro- rose, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if you tried to do that, it's, it's not, to me, that's not the proper way of a human to be walking. That's what caught my attention at first. Is this the full frame that we're seeing? Yes. That basically, there was only one picture that was sent out, and this okay. is it. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I have it one zoomed and not zoomed, but it's on the internet. You can go on the internet, and it's there. You can take a look at it and zoom in, do whatever you want. Um, but, and then what got me excited when this guy said Piaggio Road, this is on freaking Piaggio Road. All right, now we'll Lake is on Piaggio Road. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, anyway, th- so this picture is out. So, the guy says, "I live on Piedra Road," and I said, "Awesome." So we met that night at seven o'clock. Alan, I go. I, I first I text Alan. I go, Alan, 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 Alan. She finally answered me. Right <laughs> then, I basically told him what was going on, and the dude freaked out. I said, "I think this is it. I think this is what we've been waiting for right here." And what I mean by that is eventually we knew that the time would come where a call like this would come in on the valley floor that there's a good possibility that we're going to get some good stuff and he just freaked like i freaked so i was so excited on that night at 6 30 i went to his house i picked him up and the guy was <laughs> alan was out there at 5 30 an hour before pacing on the freaking driveway because he was so excited so i picked him up we go to Sanger, order pizza. The guy shows up, and the guy, okay, is um, he's a very young kid, like 25, 26 years old. Mm-hmm. He came in all dirty, and what he what he told me, he says he has property out there. He's he's living in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a single house, and he maintains farmland for a, a very wealthy guy. And that's what he does. So he stays there, I think, probably rent-free, I'm thinking. But he comes in all dirty, and the guy's hungry. And I introduced myself to him, and Alan introduced himself to him. And I said, here, have some pizza. And he proceeded to tell us what was going on. First, he started, <clears throat> excuse me, first he started with a sighting that he had at Pine Flat several years ago. That's where I went the other day. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay he was at Pine Flat. This was his first, he, this, I go, I've seen, he, go, this, my, I, he goes, I want to tell you my first sighting. And I said, okay, go. 
he started telling us about his pine flat sighting with his buddy when they were actually on the lake itself and they actually going off the lake and it was nighttime and they saw their sighting <clears throat> when he started to tell us that story about actually where they came up really close he actually almost broke down started to cry okay he, he had to stop and he sat down and you can tell he was he, I mean he was crying because it's that incident scared him so much it that brought to light that Bigfoot's are real I saw it you know he said he saw the expression on the face the whole nine yards he said and, and seriously after he just after he started to cry you know I looked at Alan and I went oh man um, this is getting intense so and and even Alan cheered up a little bit because Alan has had a sighting and when you have a sighting of that magnitude it changes your whole life your whole perspective in life that oh my god monsters are real so um, so now after that story of the first sighting then he started to proceed to tell us about the sighting at where he lives and he basically is saying there's about four or five of them um, there's a very very tall one he is estimating the size of this one as about 12 feet tall we're talking large and then you have medium ones and then he says they also have small ones and he says there's also one that he calls Dennis the Menace because it's it's not right he says it's it's not all there he seems to be very vocal and he doesn't look right so we're thinking maybe he's a little um, mentally retarded maybe uh, and that type and that's what he says he says he doesn't trust him he says it looks it, it doesn't look right he says and he started to tell us everything that's going on with this family how it right across the street he has acres and acres of tangerines okay okay I mean literally tangerines um, then he started to show me photographs of what he has as far as Bigfoot photos and he started showing us the Bigfoot uh, pictures as far as photo uh, as far as feet goes and I'm gonna show you guys that right now uh, the first what he showed us was uh, I'm gonna show you this right here all right I'm gonna zoom in on it I'm sorry okay see that Mickey yeah okay that he made a cast out of that it uh, I measured it with 18 inches now I saw this online, mm -hmm. and that's a drip irrigation going yes, across it is. there. Yes, right in the middle of the. Of the Why uh, did he put that on top of there? Or no, no, that? that that's where that's where it was. Okay. The actual Bigfoot stepped on it. Stepped on the drip irrigation. Yes, yes. That's how he found it. Okay. So when he made the cast, he did it just like that. So the Bigfoot stepped on it just like that, uh, and I again, I'm not. A, I mean, you are. Um, you would have thought, okay, did he, wouldn't it have bent it or broken it? That's what my maybe? thought is because okay. usually drip irrigation is a, is a rigid pipe. Mm -hmm. Plastic. Some, some, yeah. Plastic. It, it's, it's, plastic yeah. pipe. So I, I don't know. But I don't know what they have out there. I'd like. Right. I know, I'm going to take you. Yeah. I'm going to take you. So, um, so that, he made a cast of it and that's the cast that I'm going to show you right now and that I showed on that first night that we were there. As a matter of fact, this is him holding it. You know, that's, that's me. Uh, putting my hand on it um, the toes were so incredibly clear I mean this was one of the best that I have seen that's him holding it obviously the middle part is messed up because that's where the that's irrigation what the pipe was pipe was the okay. pipe was right um, and that's him holding it so um, he started to show me all this and he would get, we were trying to make him comfortable with us because he, he had no idea you guys have to understand he had no clue about the Sanger Paranormal Society, had no clue about Paranormal Central. Just, he went on the internet. He doesn't have internet out there. He went on his phone and typed in Bigfoot and Sanger and our name came up. And that's the reason why he called me. Okay, he had no idea who I was, what we did, no freaking clue. He just saw two guys show up at me and Ed's that wanted to talk Bigfoot. And he let it all out. He basically said, I mean, if I would tell you exactly what he told me right now, mm -hmm. all you guys out there on TV land would think this guy is smoking crack. There's no way he's on meth. There's absolutely no way this is happening to him at all. So after he finished, he says, man, I am so glad you guys are here because I needed to take that off, off my, my chest. He says, because I've tried to tell people and no one would believe him. 
And uh, I said, dude, we believe you. I could tell he was not bullshitting. I can tell when you know somebody is telling a story, mm-hmm. you know, you can tell. I can tell this guy was it. So, so he goes, he goes, um, I, you know, I want to take you guys up there. And I'm going, oh, awesome. I'm going, um, do you guys want to go right now? And I said, oh, yes, we want to go right now. But then he says, I lied to you guys. He goes, the place is not on Piedra. Because it's on Riverbend. And I went, Riverbend, Riverbend. I quickly got on my phone. I Googled Riverbend. And Riverbend goes from north to south a long ways. Okay, And it's way closer than Piedra. All right. So so we finished. It was 9 o'clock. Me and Ned kicked us out. He said, you guys have to leave. And I said, okay, how do we get you a place? He goes, follow me. He goes, we're going to go We're gonna go down Jensen. We're going to make, and I'm not going to say exactly where it's at because I don't want millions of people to go out there with guns and stuff, right? So, yeah. but this is, this is, this is going to be, it's going to get crazier now. Um, so we go down Jensen, make a left on Academy. We go north on Academy and he says, we're going to take a ride on Shields. I'm all, okay, cool. So we're following him. Alan and I are just like freaking kids on Christmas morning. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, we're peeing in our pants, leaving traces all the way down freaking Academy. And we're going down Shields now, and we're following them. And all of a sudden, we pass the house. I'm going, dude. He goes, there's where those two little kids live that had the report last two years ago. He goes, whoa. You told Alan this? No, we, we, we both, both know. Okay. We, we've both been there. Okay. We've talked to him in person. Matter of fact, look, no, no. So anyways, I'm going, no way. And then not more than... 30 yards, he slows down, puts on his blinker, and, and he turns and he turns into his home. His home is across the street. We don't need to know. For his, his homes, his house is across the street where the two little boys saw their Bigfoot. Now, oh, okay. I thought you were trying to give directions. No, no. Stop giving directions. Now, okay. now, let me ask this. Yes. I, I just have to know this. Did he ever mention the, the two little nope. boys? Yeah, no clue. Did he? No clue. No clue. Nope. No. Okay. And then now check this out. Maybe they maybe they relayed this story to him. No. Maybe he's like now now check this out. He goes uh, after we got down. I started screaming at him. I'm going, dude, dude. And he goes, what, what, what? He goes, I have two cameras set up over there right now. And he goes, where? And he goes, you know that little marshy area over there? And he's going, I mean, over. He goes, goes, yeah. He goes, I have two cameras. He goes, we have two little boys right there at the corner who saw one. And he goes, no. I go, yeah. And then you just turn around like, yeah, you know, and I'm going, I'm going like this. I'm going, you got to be freak. Even Alan is going, this is absolutely amazing. I mean, this guy does not know about that sighting because we have never plastered it any place. We have never yeah. posted it in any place. Now you guys, you guys had the cameras up before? What, two years ago. It's okay. a matter of fact, the two cameras are there right now. Hmm. Okay. So, um, and, but that, that property is not. He can't get on that property because that's not that's not part of the property that he manages. Okay. Okay. The orange, as a matter of fact, the tangerines across the street is not where he farms. As a matter of fact, that belongs to another owner. Mm-hmm. All right. It just so happens that's where the bigfoot are coming in through that through those tangerines uh, trees, and that's when I, I you know when we passed the house I went I'm like look that they live right there and he goes he goes no way so confirmation two sightings literally in the same block all right in the same block right now i have two cameras set up they have been at the same location for two years now and we go back every you know three four or five months and i take the batteries out get the sd cards put the sd cards we haven't got anything yet but okay. this place where i have the camera set up is a marshy area for swampish type of atmosphere mm-hmm. um and there's a a big large pile of like berry wild berry bushes and that's where the two kids saw this thing walk in and just it it, it walked in there and walked right into the middle and disappeared in the brush and then they that's where the kids saw it and it so happens that right on their side of the little stream is the tangerines were he's seen his bigfoots all right so i'm going okay this is just absolutely crazy so we were talking with him that night and he was taking us everywhere where all this was happening across the street he says one was here he pulled down the tree now what's kind of cool though is that 
he had his buddy who was who had his buddy who saw exactly the same thing with him. Okay. Okay. So this now we're talking two witnesses, um, and he was there witnessing now, all this with them. Let me let me pause you right here. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want you to give too much detail about the sighting to everybody. Okay. Because you and I are going to go out there. Right. Okay. Can I th- can I talk about the sign? Not yet. Okay. Um, let's just say that I'm going to do a, we're going to go out there uh-huh. and I'm going to look at this from the forensic side. Right. Okay. And I'm going to try and gather some more evidence. Okay. Okay. That we can examine. Right. Okay. I don't want to be specific on, on the air. Okay. Because in case these guys are listening. No, they're not. Um, uh, hey, it's very good possibility. They, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want there to be any trickery sure fakery sure. whatever right. you want to call it right. Right. involved in this sure absolutely so we'll leave it at the sighting okay and let's go ahead and uh, okay. proceed okay <laughs> so um Alan and I were there and I don't remember how long we were there on that Wednesday because I had to work the following day and I was mm-hmm. tired um Alan can only stay so much outside in the cold because of his of his leg and so I said, dude, um, would you allow me to put up cameras, you know, and, and, and put them up around the house and face them out toward the areas? And he says, sure, sure, I'll let you, no problem. Um, and I said, awesome, um, when can I come out and do it? And I told him, I'll, I'll come out and do it on Saturday after work. And he said, okay. So yesterday, today's Sunday, right? Yeah. Yesterday after work, um, unfortunately, Alan was uh, at the ER taking care of his, his leg. And that morning before work, I had already loaded up all the cameras in my truck. And uh, and what sucks that day, though, is because the last half of the day, if you guys don't know what I do, I work for at and I install phone lines. I climb poles. I do it all. So it happens the last ticket of my day, I was at a Chinese restaurant and their <laughs> wire in the attic went bad. So I had to run wires sort of kind of through the attic and the insulation of the tile that had to take off. And I was just so freaking itchy and all the insulation was all over me. And I'm going, oh my God, after work, I got to go to the country and put up all these cameras. So it's like, but you know what? It's for the cause though. So when I got off work at the yard, I went into the bathroom and I washed myself with the towels as much as I could because I was so itchy, it wasn't even funny. So I got on my truck. That's dedication right there. I was I'm gonna just go going to say, I'm glad I don't have your job. I was going to go home <laughs> and take a shower, but I said, no, I want to go out there and walk in the orange field and see if I can find any footprints before it got dark. Mm-hmm. So uh, I found out Alan can't go, so I went straight from work out to the place, and I was talking. He had three of his buddies there, okay? And so it happened one of the guys that was there was the one who was with them the first night they started seeing all these things. And I'm, I'm looking at him and, and you know, he was telling, basically confirming what the first guy, Joe, said. And before we started the show, um, I told uh, Mickey about an idea that I wanted to do. And they, both of them, took me to the sign. And he says there was one behind this sign. It's a yellow sign saying, stop, stop ahead. Nothing. Oh, no, well, that stops the stop ahead. That's everywhere. You know, it's yeah. not, a, a, not yeah, a generic sign. And he said one was at the top and it had his hands around the sign and it was looking over the sign like this, like going peekaboo type of deal. Mm. And I walked up to the sign and the top of the sign was about eight foot tall. But he said the head was at the very top and it placed his hands and fingers on the sign and did like, like this type of deal. And this was at nighttime, it wasn't during the day, but they had the red light, they saw it and everything, and it took off running. And I went, and then a couple of days ago, I said, fingerprints, fingerprints, maybe, maybe. So um, there, there's, they actually had hair, they found hair, but they're trying to find it. I'm saying, oh, they, they've got to get contaminated now because who knows where it's at or whatever, okay? So, um, there's a lot of stuff that we can look at down there, and that's why I want to take you down there. All right, now, um, it, you know, there's a couple of things we can do. 
um, you know, uh, right now, so I went yesterday and I placed three cameras. I want to tell you, I'm going to show you guys what I did as far as, as far as the camera goes. Uh, boom. You know, again, we're not just a talk, you know, a, a talk show per se. We're investigators. I'm investigators. I have a degree in electronics, guys. I have a, an AS a degree. I went to DeVry Institute of Technology. I've been doing phone stuff phone for 30 years. All right, I'm pretty good at electronics and gizmos and gadgets and stuff like that. So, over the years, I've acquired cameras and uh, you know sensors and all that stuff. I have a DVR, you know, everything. So I placed three cameras around his mobile home and facing out to the locations where they're actually coming up. And I set them up. And I hit record, and I told them how to start, uh, how to record at night, and turn it off in the morning because during the day, obviously, they don't come around. He said they usually come around after twelve midnight and to about five o'clock in the morning. That's when they actually come around. Okay. Um, and um, so I placed some cameras, and they're over there right now. Okay. Um, plus, I also have two other uh, game cameras that are in the marshy area, around the block where all this is happening. Um, so that's where we stand right now at this location. This is not the foothills. This is not the mountains. We're talking 15, 20 minutes from here. It's valley floor. It's valley freaking floor, guys. All right. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's very, it's, it just, it's, it's confirming for me that, 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 you know, where the two boys saw their Bigfoot sighting two years ago, all of a sudden you have this guy now seeing something. And this is the type of guy, I mean, where these little boys live, mm -hmm. not even close to where he lives. I mean, it's it's close, but, you know, it, it's he's not the type of guy who's going to go out and say hi to everybody and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think they're lying to us. It's just, it just his story at me and Ed's, it was so riveting. It was just, I, I, I know he's telling the truth. If he's lying to us, if this is all a prank, then it's one freaking good prank. Mm -hmm. But what's leading me to say no, it's only because of the little boys who saw the Bigfoot there two years ago. That's what's telling me I think we got something here. I really do. Okay. So uh, I've got the cameras up right now. Um, I talked to him and I told him about what I wanted to do and he said, sure, come on down. He says, I told him, don't touch that particular object that we want to do, what we want to do. And um, I'm going to bring somebody down and he says, well, can you come down during the evening, late, early evening? Because that way we don't want the farmers or, 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 or the boss man or somebody seeing what we're doing. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he wants to be hush hush about it. Okay. Um, what is funny is that he says that the property where the tangerines are across the street uh, he was out there. He sort of kind of like watches that area too. And the owner of that particular property drove up one day and, you know, he was out there. Joe was out there getting them tangerines and he introduced him stuff because he didn't really know who he was. And he was driving his Mercedes and, you know, and a you know, big high class dude, a lot of money. And Joe told him what he was looking for. And he was trying to be nonchalant and not trying to, act, you know, be like, okay, this guy is going to think I'm an idiot for bringing this up. And he told them what he is witnessing that here and the owner said hmm he said 10 years ago one of my workers saw something run across one of these orange things and he said it was brown <laughs> and uh, he told him and and he and then he went huh so and then he didn't say anything he just said okay do whatever you want to do you know and he walked away but the owner said to Joe one of my workers about 10 years ago saw something run and that right there, I'm going, wow, okay. Didn't so, say what it was. No, right? no, okay. but it, it, it was, it, he said it was an, it looked like a bear. All right, so um, a bear running, uh, <laughs> okay. All right, so, um, so three sightings, and we're talking 10 years ago. So how long have these things been coming down in this area and eating? You know, we don't know. I mean, how long have they been? Um, you know, farming down there. I mean, we there's there's all there's. As a matter of fact, right there on on. Well, no, I can't say it. That's going to give away the area. 
Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. You said two years ago they the boys had the sighting. Yeah. What month was that in? Do we know? I don't remember. Okay. I, so I was wondering remember. if it if it's during the winter months when the citrus fruit are, are coming into season. Yes. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind too is we're in the middle of a drought. Right. Um, mountain lions mm -hmm. have been known to come down to the valley floor. Right. They've been spotted down sure. here. Um, they've even had a deer come down here recently right. in North Fresno. Mm -hmm. We're talking a deer for four point yeah. buck. Okay, running around the neighborhood, mm -hmm. they're looking for water. Sure. So I wonder if, because of the drought, I I, the I lake think is dry. I, I Pine think flat is to dry. be honest with you, I so. don't think the drought has anything to do with this. Hmm. I think the Bigfoots have been down here and coming down here and all have been down here forever. And I bet you anything that if we were to flyer all the houses in the whole valley floor in that area, I bet you some people would respond back to us about Bigfoot signings. I bet you they're keeping their mouths shut because they're scared. And I know that they're, 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 I'm sure they've seen them. I'm sure. Because, you know, I've had police officer in Orosi see one. Um, a guy that was a long time ago. I even lost contact with him. Him and his wife saw one walking across the orange field. Uh, they're coming down here this low. Um, and, and, you know, during the summer months, they go right back up because it's too freaking hot down here. <laughs> I mean, yeah. right? So I think for I'll all go those, with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and what, I, what, I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to introduce Joe to that family, to do little kids, mm -hmm. to, to confirm to both of them. And I asked him, I go, do you mind if I introduce you to him? He said, sure. Tell you what, before we do any of this, okay. let's talk to the boys. Okay. Let's talk to the boys. Let's get their description. Sure. We'll get a detailed description sure. from him. Sure. We'll compare them. Yeah. And see if they're I'll the same reasonable suspect. Sure. Sure. No. Yeah. I know. I mean, like I said, you know, we interviewed him two years ago. Um, it was funny because David Ragosa went too, and okay. David basically told him, "Not you guys didn't see anything." He said that to mm. him. He goes, "You didn't see anything. You didn't see anything," mm. and that was it. And the boys were all. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, I will take you to the boys, and I will let them tell you the story. Okay. Um, and we'll start off there. And as a matter of fact, if you want, we'll do that first one night, uh, and then the next night we'll go over to the place where you can do your whatchamacallit. I'd rather do the the forensic stuff first. First, get that okay. So the be, if we for it deteriorate, yeah. it goes away. Okay, okay. Well, we can do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. That's okay, good. so... Exciting stuff, guys. That's where we stand right now. Um, um, you know, I, 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 I've always known that these things were down here, but I didn't think there were that many of them. Uh, and and it's just, it's just you know, the two boys siding, and then all of a sudden, right around the block, you have this. Uh, and I said to Joe, I said, do you mind if I take you and introduce you to that family? He said, yeah, let's go. So... That's going to tell us right now if he knows him or not, obviously. Okay. okay you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's the first time, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So that will, you know, add a little credibility to the whole sighting and the case itself. Um, but I'm glad you're here because I'm going to take your butt with me and we're going to go and you're going to do your stuff. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Wow, are you guys excited? I am excited. I am like freaking can kid in a candy store. Uh, you know, um, you know. Forget about Katy Perry right now. This is you know. <laughs> so. All right. So where are we at? We're at uh, 18 after the hour. Uh, in about 12 minutes, we're gonna take a little short break. Um, and during that break, usually Alan gets up and has to walk around because yeah, of his leg he can't sit down but you know if you want you can go inside get some munchies get the soda sure. but at that time we have emeralds uh we you know we need to think of a, a name. name have you thought about it yeah. a name for what she has a little 10 minute spot where she talks about her um anything anything but recently uh you know she's a criminology major oh. and okay. And she is uh, ha at a, uh, taking a class where the professor is way into what we're talking about. We're talking about conspiracy, the uh, conspiracy theories, uh, Sandy Hook shootings, all that. You know, this guy's a doctor and a, a professor at Fresno State, and he believes it's it's 
there's not right something going on you know he tells us all the time to think for ourselves yeah. don't listen to the media so that's for <laughs> okay so you know emerald actually a couple of nights a couple of weeks ago when she was telling us about this um you know we talk about this stuff here on you know about conspiracy theories and mm -hmm. stuff and it so happens that he was uh, trying to get some answers out of the, the students and she happened to raise her hand because she knew it the answers because we talk about him here mm -hmm. and he's going where in the hell did you hear that <laughs> and then emerald had to go you all you know i I, I, I'm at a you know show, and he's going, boy, you and I got a lot of talked about, you know. So we thought, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and continue that with the professor. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to contact the professor. I'm hoping the professor is going to come in here and sit down and talk with us. That'd be super cool. Yeah. So, so we'll yeah, see. exactly. So, um, so in about 12 minutes, we're going to talk with Emerald, and we're going to let her do her stuff, and afterwards, we're going to get a hold of Heidi, uh, and then. Um, and then we'll let her, we'll talk about what she has to talk about. Uh, and then... You're going to make fun of me. Why? You said you were going to make fun oh, of me Oh, it's later. too late. No, I was going to do it at the very beginning, but I, I didn't, I couldn't do it after all. So okay. I forgot. So, cool but, story. um, but anyways, okay. So, um, so that is my Bigfoot story, you guys. Uh, it is out real. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, Pine Flat. I don't want to yes. talk about it right now. Cause okay. l let's talk about it after Heidi at seven o'clock. Okay. We'll talk about what you got going in Pine Flat, and we'll show you pictures, uh, and we'll go from there. So, um, and you know what? It's it's two, eight. It's twenty after. So let's just go ahead and and let's start with Emerald. Let's go ahead and get into Emerald. So if you want I, to go inside, go to the bathroom. I thought of a name. What is it? Emerald's facet. You, you should. I start writing down these names. I should. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Lewis. Get it? You know, L Emerald Lewis, is faceted like a you know like a diamond would be. Yeah. Okay. This is your facet to the show. <laughs> Lewis actually came out with a name. Let me see if I can find it uh, from Australia. He actually sent me one. Um, let me find it. Let me find it. Uh, where are you, Lewis? And I think he's asleep right now. He's barely getting up. And those who are wanting to know about this Pine Flat deal, you're going to want to see the pictures. <laughs> it's an amazing find. I could not believe we found it. And I bet you anything right now, if you went back up, they would be covered up. Maybe not. Um, you don't think so? I've got somebody looking into it, too. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's a he's kind of a historian of that area. Okay. So he's looking into All it. Right. He's got the pictures, too. Um, Debbie, my fiance, is watching right now. She was there. She we, She's like, don't you dare get in that hole. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh, I'm not going to get out. I'm going to get into it. I don't <laughs> care what you say. I'm going to get into it. I got to get these for Jeff. Um that's what I was saying too. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you called. It was like you're like, dude, dude. But uh, see, this this is cool stuff, dude. I mean, come on, you're into it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm trying to find the name. I can't find the name right now. So, well, anyways, but anyways, okay. So, Emerald. Yes. Let's talk about your week. Okay. So this was what day was the 28th? Was that Monday or Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Let me see. But anyway, so on the 28th, which was Wednesday. I wonder if we had anything good on Monday. No, we were off that day. Um, sorry. So, like I said, every time we take notes in class, I'll write PC next to something interesting. That way I remember for Paranormal Central. So, oh, okay. I thought you were thinking, like, PC, like, penal code section. No, oh. no. Okay. That's a different <laughs> okay. class. That's okay. a different okay. class. Gotcha. Um, so, he brings the Wall Street Journal in. And this was on the 28th. He read it the 27th. And he goes, so what do you guys think of this? And he puts the newspaper on the overhead, and it says DEA using license plate data. Data. So basically, the DEA, which I mean, it's been in the DMV. They're using our license plate da plate data. I can't talk right now. Um, basically, like keeping track of everybody, everybody who owns a vehicle. So I mean, I thought that was kind of interesting because they've been doing it for years. It's like that whole Stingray thing where the towers that look like cell phone towers, but they're actually tracking your data. That happened a while back. Um, this is more specific on the license plates. And this was, like I said, this was just released on the 27th. And they've been doing this for years. And he mentioned, like, you know, if they've been doing this for this long and it barely leaked out, he's like, what else do you think they're doing? Now, what do you mean the license plate data? Um, but how are they tracking us? What, what, what do you mean? They're putting our license plates, basically, because these research methods, mm -hmm. in spreadsheets. 
and they're using that data. They're saying they're using it for criminal activity, like any drug traffickers. They're going to have those license plates open and stuff like that, stolen cars, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in order to get those, you have to kind of get everybody else's. See what I'm saying? Okay. I don't know if you've I read do, that article. You know, if they want to know that I'm going to the store or whatever, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, that's... Um, well, it's just kind know, of a it's... more intrusive. I mean, and as we progress, it's getting more yeah. and more intrusive. Like what they, th I mean, if they wanted to look at my phone through my camera right now, they probably could. Yeah, they could. They yeah. can't. They can't. Well, not yeah, yours. Yeah, you have yeah, tape yeah. over it. <laughs> <laughs> There's Evil tape laugh. on this computer. Now, not to, Evil not laugh. to play devil's advocate. Okay. okay. But play it. That's my role. <laughs> the greater good. Okay. You yeah. Know, are, it, it's for the greater good of. But where security. do but where do we cross that line? Exactly. Where, where do you cross that line? But, you know, if you're living, if you aren't doing anything wrong. Oh, exactly. And you won't have anything okay. to worry about. See, and we had talked about that in a previous class with a different teacher. And it was race relations and stuff like that. And she says, and I had brought that point up too. I was like, you know, if an officer stopped me, I have nothing to hide. It's not an intrusion for me. Like, if you want to search my car, yeah, by all means. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I don't care. But she mentions the point, okay, if they're stopping you twice on your way to school on the way back how much time of your day is that taking you're late to class is that going to mess your day up you're doing it almost every other day and mind you this was a race relations class and this was when Ferguson was going on and everything and we had talked about that and again it's where is that line crossed like like I've been pulled over twice and that's because I was speeding but if I was pulled over like every day just for the way I look or for me driving my truck or something like that mm -hmm. I mean that would kind of get intrusive after a while so well but they had there has to be a reason why yeah. they're doing that i mean um because you can report them right i mean there's i mean there's a thing called probable cause and reasonable suspicion yes, yes reasonable suspicion means they have reason to believe that you are doing some kind of criminal activity yeah okay probable cause would be they see you doing something illegal now they've well, got probable cause. We go into to, the Brown versus Texas case. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where the case ruled that even though they were in a ba bad location and the officers had suspicion, it gave them no right to detain them or stop them. So we had we were talking about that to you. But, um, yeah, that's the that's what I'm kind of proceeding to with the license plate. Like, where does that line cross? Because mm -hmm. I understand it is. It's a safety issue is what they're saying. And then another point, um, Jeff will like this one. The whole after the Charlie Hebdo attacks, um, the sheriff or the chief, whoever it was, the one who committed suicide. Are you familiar with that one? No. Yeah, there was an officer. Um, oh, if he's the one in charge of the. Um, the, the victim, the investigation. Of the what what incident? Though? Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he committed suicide. Okay. Well, the family wants the autopsy who, quote unquote, killed himself and they're not allowing them to see wow. that. Wow. Well, they're probably still under the investigation. I mean, they, yeah. there's... It does take a I while. Mean, and was this... Was well, this wait a minute. If, wait, 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 wait. If it's a suicide, then what... Then why won't they give it up right away? There's still a... an investigation that has to happen. Even though, I mean, there is a suicide. Right. Um, they aren't allowed to give that information out just in case. I mean, they probably have to look at it at all angles. It was a police chief that yeah. came out yeah. himself. Okay, I'm not familiar with it, but I mean that's pretty big, right no, there. I mean, yeah. for a, for a police chief to kill himself, I mean they're probably really looking into it. Right. Um, now, as far as the agency goes, if it's in his jurisdiction, where was this at? Was it? See, I'm not too sure on the details. Well, okay. well, was it, it, it in, is this, uh, was it in France? It, or was yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was it's France. France. Okay. Right. I don't know what their laws are there, so they could be different there. I mean, but if it was here. I can tell you if a police chief committed suicide and it was in his district, that agency would not be handling the investigation. Yeah. Okay. So That makes a little bit more sense now. And then what else are we talking about? Oh, I had mentioned this, but I'm only going to touch on this because, again, it's my professor's research, and I don't know where he's going to go with this. But remember the whole issue with the J.P. Morgan, the bankers? Right. The mm -hmm. ones who were committing suicide with themselves? Right, right. Well, just to mention... Um, they have an insurance policy on all their employees. So every time an employee offs themselves, they're getting a num named amount of money. That's all I'm going to throw out there because he's still researching it. And this is what your professor said. Yes. Yes. So he so he's sort of hinted that they weren't suicides. And he has a theory with his data and everything, which 
I kind of want to get to know more. And he's going to talk about that more with us tomorrow. Okay. So I want to try to work with him on that. So I thought that was really cool. And also he says, um, it's impossible to fully discover cause, like cause and causation, uh, crime causation. And then he goes, science can always be incorrect. And he just says, remember that. Because regardless, if it's incorrect, you have to do more research. And then that research could be incorrect. So there's this never-ending thing. So it's not always 100%. Mickey? Well, there has to be a hypothesis. And if that yeah. hypothesis can be proven with time and time again, then the science becomes fact. And you can argue with science all you want to. Not to, I'm quoting someone else here, but you can argue against science all you want to. It's still right. Right. So if the if the results are are replicatable, if you can repeat them and still come to the same conclusion each time, okay, then science becomes. A oh fact no, 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 I'm until. not talking about theory, like um, crime causation, sort of like okay. um, yeah. Let me be more specific. My apologies. Like he brought up. Um, he said more guns in it, like this is what some people would say, more guns in an area would increase the amount of homicides. Well, he said, let's flip that coin. He says, what if the amount of homicides are increasing? So that increases um, amount of guns in the area because they're okay. trying to protect themselves. So he's like, you're never going to know the exact cause for a crime that was committed if it's um, the number of crimes that are committed. Sort of. I can't really explain how he said it. He said it well. I just didn't write it down right. Um, yeah. Okay. Like, did that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you always have to flip that coin over. You have to look at it at all angles. Different, yeah. different angles. Like, yeah. Uh, you know. Right. Okay. All right. I, make, make, I understand where you're coming from. So. Um, it's like traffic deaths. Mm -hmm. Let's take traffic deaths, yeah. for, for example. Okay. If you have safer cars, okay, you have less traffic deaths. Okay. If you have more traffic deaths, do you need safer cars? I mean, in... I mean, I I understand kind of where you where you're where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, what else did he say? Anything? To you you're still in the front front the front of the class? Yeah. I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, he called you in front of the class to do this? No, 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 no. Oh no, no, no. Uh, oh, I you're sit. sitting in front I, of the class. Yeah, class. I always sit. It's best to sit. It is. Um, I, j I think you get more out of class that way. But we're we're at the beginning, so we're getting into our topic of data because it's a research methods class. So he's showing us spreadsheets and hypothesis and theories and simple ways of doing it and then he's going over our writing assignment so right it, it's we're in the basis so he's not talking much about the other stuff but he will throw that in every now and then which is really cool okay. so do you think uh he i mean you told him about what you do oh yeah i was talking to him friday and i was like you know we'd love to have you on the show i'll get that email out to you and he was kind of he's like okay he okay. was kind of cool I about think, it i so think cool. i think we can make it happen <laughs> i mean and i was telling her you know states universities are very liberal you know and, yeah. and 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 when he was telling she was telling us about this particular professor who's a doctor and uh, it, it was a law, he, degree. It, a law degree and he is <laughs> talking about the stuff we talk about mm -hmm. said sandy hook never happened um you know the media and i'm, I'm going like and fresno state hired this guy like wow you know people kind of confuse things a little bit when when they talk about law enforcement and being like you know, law enforcement people are anti-gun. They want to take all your guns away, right, guns right. and that. It is the exact opposite. opposite. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, usually I would say, you know, most everybody in law enforcement has a conservative background. Right. They they, they are pro-gun. Yes. They are pro-citizen. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not the ones, you know, people think that the, that the police are out to take away their rights. It's just the opposite, yeah. you know. Right. We want people to have more rights. I'm I'm going to get my concealed weapons permit here, uh, pretty quick. Smart man, pretty quick. Yeah. So it's, it's I think it's time, not only it, it's just for safety purposes, but um, we are now in what we do here. Um, I don't know. I think I need one, um, so I'm going to get one here pretty quick. So um, for safety purposes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think everybody should have a CCW. Yeah. Um. It's, you know. Who's Mar Mar allowed to have them. Margaret Mims is a very high into everybody getting one. Yeah. She is so into it. Um, is Chief Dyer the same way? Uh, you know, our department has a, I'm not sure what their policies are mm -hmm. as far as, uh, you know, the public goes as far as getting the CCWs. Mm -hmm. um, that's a totally 
Is he is he into people getting concealed? I I really don't know. You know? I don't know his opinion on that. I, that's one thing I don't. I, I know Margaret Mims came out. As a matter of fact, she actually wrote a letter to the president. Oh, is it, yeah. To and I actually have it here, that stating that um, um, you know we will not take the guns away from the citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, and she and I have have heard her on KMJ specifically saying, everyone, go get your concealed weapons permit. No. I, I uh, took a class. Um, this has been about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, talked about Obamacare. Not to change subject from the sure. paranormal, but mm-hmm. but talking about Obamacare. Uh-huh. And we had a, an instructor who was talking to us, talking about when you go to the doctor and you're on Obamacare, okay? One of the questions, oh, is, one yeah. of do the you questions, own a weapon? do you own a firearm, okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. So what? if, pe- yes. what? if yes. people mark yes, okay? Uh-huh. Now, if you have any type of mood altering drug whether it's a painkiller yep. whether it's sleeping pills anything anything that's gonna to alter your mood whether it makes you you know right a little high because you're because right. you're you're experiencing pain right okay and you have to have a painkiller right okay if they give you that painkiller okay and you have marked yes for owning a firearm mm-hmm. this is where the fine print comes in okay they have a legal right to come confiscate your gun. Wow. And this is what I was told. When the deputies come to confiscate the gun, okay, they don't want to take the gun, okay? They have to, okay, because it's the law, okay? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's how the law is written, okay? And if they did not, you know, this is a new law, okay? Sure, sure. So when they take take the gun, okay, Mm -hmm. you have to think about you know, if they didn't, you know, let's you know, let's say somebody's worked for the sheriff's department for twenty five years. Right. Okay. Are and, they, are and, they and, gonna are they gonna get fired for not following the law and lose their retirement? Ooh. Lose Medical their benefits, mm-hmm. everything. Now it's not only one gun, it's gonna be everything they own. Now see this is this is where the whole conceal thing people say why do I want to let my government know that I have a weapon? You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Because once I get a concealed weapon permit, it's in the database well, that I have a gun. When you buy a gun, mm-hmm. it's in the database anyway. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. True. True. And that goes for long guns or short guns. Okay. Well, I mean, Hands, I mean, yeah. I, okay. So that, yeah, that makes sense. So I guess I'm going to have to go get an illegal gun. Oh, I, mean, I didn't say nope. that. <laughs> Saturday night special. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yeah, that makes yeah, I, yeah. I mean, cause you know, when I started investigating Bigfoots, you know, you own was a forty four, or thirty eight. I've got a couple. You got everything. <laughs> you got everything. Got all the so stuff. when yeah. when we go up to the mountains, you know, Mickey T takes his his guns, man. I mean, come on, we're in territory that don't belong to us it belongs to the animals and not only just to the animals but you have to think about the bigger picture too there are drug runners up there yes, they who are. have illegal marijuana grows yes, they are. who have illegal methamphetamine labs up yep. there you have to think about that too not just just the animal being attacked by a bear or bigfoot right right okay. so i went out and i bought a 30 out six you know specifically for this you know um so uh you know i have a shotgun and my wife has a weapon so yeah so anyways um, I just want to carry one with me though wherever I go. That's all. Yeah. That's a good idea. So, so don't mess with me. <laughs> Not yet, anyways. <laughs> oh gosh. Give it so. a little while. <laughs> yeah, give it a little while. So, okay. So, uh, so what else? That's basically it for now. Yeah. Like, like I said, we've been going over more class materials than the other stuff. Turn your mic towards you, like right, like point it. There you go. Okay. There you go. I like that voice. What? No, it just said you sound far away. I am far away. <laughs> You're in the dark corners of Paranormal Central. <laughs> I'm going to throw a rock at her. Why isn't she on camera? She doesn't want to be. I'm the running <laughs> joke of the show. Well, apparently I was until I got an article written about me. It's kind of my picture in it. <laughs> but the whole point of me being back here, because it was like, well, no one saw me. So I was mm-hmm. kind of like 
Woohoo, well, it's you know an what? emerald sighting. Yeah. Well, you know what? That picture, you really can't see you anyway. You have the cat, and it's like half and of the you. the sun, yeah. Yeah, you can't tell. But basically, everybody just hears a voice. She's out in the corner someplace. Yeah. You know, and that's the way we want to keep it. She wants to keep it that way. I don't care. She don't the cat. So, I don't Maybe, you know, maybe like the Howard Stern thing. You know, I, you know, Cheryl was telling me, Diane, whatever her name is, was telling me that um, I forgot the producer, the, the, the black girl, I guess, used to be the producer, but now she's in front of the camera. So maybe eventually, you know, there might be a camera for everybody. Cool story. Yeah. <laughs> Bite me. Yeah. So, okay. So, all right. So, um, all right. So, cool. All right. You know what? Let's call Heidi. So you, you guys want to take, you, you want to uh, go to the bathroom or? No, I need the phone. I need the phone, man. I'm gonna throw you mine. Ready? Good catch. Caught Pretty it. soon you're gonna need an iPhone six because oh. that one's gonna be broken. <laughs> I'll buy him an OtterBox. Pitch. A oh, what? An oh. OtterBox. Why do you give me the one and then oh, the case doesn't? Oh, okay. I have to take that off. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff. But uh, um, yeah. What are they, I was just gonna talk about. Uh, no. Well, actually, I bought a floor. I got a floor. You showed me that. Yeah, it, yeah, and it's part of the iPhone. For the iPhone. So I haven't really got to use it. I used it when we went out to the place here on the valley floor to look, you know, and we could see the horses and they show up mm -hmm. at night. Do you remember, I don't know, um, bringing up the Wolf Manor. Okay. Okay. Um, there was one of the ghost shows okay, that did something there and they got a hot spot on the wall. Did I ever show you the, the picture the flare. my boss got? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But they had the flare on there and they had a hot spot on the wall. Didn't they find bees in the wall? Yes. Ah, oh, good catch, Mickey. Uh, Heidi. Hey. What's cracking? What are you doing? Uh, I am buried alive in Siberia during snow. Oh, no Alabama. kidding! You're in Chicago, <laughs> right? Yes. And in the armpit of the storm. <laughs> Holy mackerel! So, how many feet is it out right now? Can you open the door and can't go outside? Uh, no, I can't. It, it would be quite a trip down. I'm in a high rise. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! That would be well. Can you jump into the snow? Uh, yeah, you know, I may not hit ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how many feet is it falling per hour, or what's the story? No, you know, I'd say maybe there's about 12 inches out there right now. So it's it's they're talking about snow drifts being three to five feet though. So it's a bit wicked. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's like blowing sideways. Uh, a, a horizontal, uh, a vertical, and 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 in circular motions. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> are they? Uh, are they? Uh, is like? Are they canceling schools or anything? Sure did. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Sure did. The, uh, Chicago Public Schools. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, for them to plan ahead like that is kind of weird. So it's it's cool for my friends who are teachers. Yay for you. Kids think it's a day off for them. It's like, no, teachers really need a break from you. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is going, yeah, Heidi, Heidi, yeah. <laughs> so and for those who don't know, it's my so wife true. is a school it's teacher. So so. Oh, my gosh, the rotten stinkers of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, wait, wait, I can hear Cheryl is going, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Okay, let's, uh, Heidi Hollis uh, has been with us how long? About a month now, right? A little more than a month? Uh, well, you know, there was a couple of weeks there I was uh, slapped oh. in the hospital, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, okay. <laughs> well, Heidi is uh, a new addition to our uh, force here, and she is an author. Explain to everybody, tell everybody who you are and what you do and how many books you have and all that. Sure, I have a spiel here. Let's try the spiel. Personally, I'm someone who has been there, seen that, experienced it, freaked out, found some answers, wrote about it, got over it, and now I'm hoping to help others do the same thing and understand this crazy world of ours. I have six books published on everything from angels to aliens, shadow people, hat man, and I'm even a cartoonist. I have some books out there that are of the funny sort. So um, I try to help people, you know, really get in touch with this odd world. I mean, there's so much that's going on out there, so I welcome people. Feel free to write me, share their stories, pictures, and anything and everything, and, uh, you know, if you have questions or you just want to share your story, that's awesome. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll use it on the show. So write me at oddadvice, hh, at gmail.com. Uh, you can also visit my main website, which is heidihollis.com. Um, so, yeah, I have fun doing this stuff, and, you know, it's all about helping the people get a grasp on this right. stuff, you know? Right, right. I mean, there's nowhere that oh, people, uh, no, no, you know, people can't go to their store or to the, you know, they, where are they going to get help? 
You know, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. You, know, you can't. Yes, uh, I, it's crazy. You know, when I, I'm from Milwaukee, and I was part of their emergency uh, contact uh, for the city for people who had fears or had experienced, you yeah. know, aliens or seeing UFOs. And that's something I never got a phone call. I was so anxiously awaiting it. So wow. I love that you have that hotline. Now, well, how did they? How did they get you to? I mean, what did they just call you one day? Said, "Hey, we know who you yeah. are." And- yes, they did. They called me out of the blue, and they said there was a city emergency. Uh, contact center of some sort, like uh, for people that are suicidal, people that are experiencing different types of things, and and they're like, can we put you down as somebody to, to talk to if somebody's dealing with aliens? I was stunned. I'm like, well, uh, sure, okay. That, I isn't, mean, isn't that like... Um, that's like an acknowledgement. <laughs> what's that? Uh, an acknowledgement? Mm, well, well, not necessarily because... They, they, well, sort of. Not, I, mean, I mean, well, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You know, yeah. it, it was really kind of cool. I mean, I guess Milwaukee's kind of progressive and uh, thinking ahead like that. But I, I held my meetings at the uh, public library, so people knew I was there, and you know, it was it was really kind of it was kind of cool. It was like wow. nice to to get such a call. So perhaps we should all reach out and you know become a, a shoulder to lean on when it comes yeah. to these odd well, things. You know, I'm, I'm, getting, about I, that. I'm getting those calls on the phone, man, let me tell you. And um, as a matter That's of fact, awesome. I, got a, oh, I got a couple of calls that we got to talk about, but uh, okay. All right, Heidi sent me over some photographs that we're going to talk about right now, and you can also view them at artbell.com's homepage. Heidi Hollis has the pictures on there. Go there, and if not, stay here with us, and I'll put them up as she talks about them. So I'm Indeed. going to pull them up right now. And rods and you know what? <laughs> okay. And and Mickey loves rods. So go ahead, Heidi. Go ahead and start on yeah. the rods, man. Do it. The focus is on rods. We there is no stone we will not unturn. I, I mean, really. I'm like I just find this topic to be absolutely fascinating, and I thought I'd give everybody a little bit of history lesson on rods. So first rod that was absolutely discovered. I guess you could say it more in the modern age, October twentieth of two thousand and two. A reporter, actually, he was a he was a, a photographer for Fox News for Albany, uh, New York. His name was Brandon Mowry, and he was out shooting some weather footage that day at the Albany International Airport near the runway, filming the the airplanes land and take off. <clears throat> As he was editing this film, he happened to pause the footage and spotted a long cylindrical shaped object passing a passenger plane. Now. What's interesting about the timing of when this this happened? You guys could see the the, um, the photograph there. Yeah, I just posted. Uh, I just posted it in the upper right hand corner. Uh, you know, the first image actually shows some of the more close up shots of what a rod looks like. Right. I mean, they're kind of these really fantastical looking things. I mean, with these you know fluttery like uh, appendages. It's it's really kind of funky. But um, but the second one shows the plane in the upper right hand corner, and it shows this rod passing by the plane. Now, what was interesting about the timing of when this happened, <clears throat> this happened soon after 9-11. So, this looked like to this, this photographer, like potentially a missile, you know, something that was coming close to a passenger plane, you know, so he, he felt he should report this to the airport security. So he did, and they said that they did not have this on uh, radar at all. So, guess what they did? They contacted the FBI, who came into the studio, this is hilarious, came into the studio and essentially snatched the footage. But luckily he had a a copy or a backup or something because that's what you're looking at. So I find that that kind of funny. There you go, that's the picture. Um, And then in 2003 in Baghdad, a, a rod flew over a Swedish tank. I think a lot of us have seen that. Uh, image. I could not get that. Did I send that over to you? No, I could not find that one. I was like, darn it all. I was trying to get that one. But it's just the coolest thing, you know, live television, and here's a rod going right over the Swedish tank. And uh, soon, what's fascinating about the rod phenomenon is that it's found that these things often like to fly near military operations and aircraft. So it leads a lot of people to believe that potentially, potentially that these rods are a secret government aircraft of some sort. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) Go on. (laughs) Okay. Yeah? No, no, well, Mickey Mickey is a a photographer. 
um, by choice. Okay. okay. So what? What you're what you're seeing is an optical illusion. An this optical is, illusion. Is not a... Ah, that's my next on the line. Yes, okay. I've heard right. that argument. Okay. I have heard okay. That well, argument. okay. Well, okay. Heidi, go ahead and talk about the optical illusion. Go for it. Yes, because they think you know it is just you know the pattern of of a bug, and it and it looks like you know it's kind of roping together or something like like that. So that that's that's something that is is often uh, called a skyfish. Here's here's the definition of skyfish. They're elongated aircraft. Or artifacts produced by cameras that inadvertently capture several of a flying insect's wing beats. Videos of rod-shaped, unidentified, mysterious animal skyfish moving quickly through the air were claimed by some to be alien life forms or small UFOs. <clears throat> but subsequent experiments show that these rods appear in film because of an optical illusion. Now, what's really, really, really fascinating when it comes to that. Um, an optical illusion. There is a photograph. That, isn't that a, that's a cool picture that you got hanging up there? Um, there is a photo that I sent your way of a three-winged bug, or it looks like a little glowing man that's attached to uh, one of the rods that I sent your way there, Jeff. Okay, put it up right now. <laughs> yeah, and that kind of beats all you know speculations that this is just a bug now no. i also sent a link your oh. way for a video uh monster quest did a, a special on it which was a fascinating uh episode where they discuss this three-winged beast <laughs> there is no such thing so it's like so what are we saying here this is a uh, interdimensional being that's going in and out of our our world i guess you could say but What's interesting, you know, Jose Escamilla, he has like over 2,000 images, and his oldest is from 1910 in France, uh, which was, it's kind of sketchy, it's kind of hard to see the image, but um, he argues that uh, if these are distorted insect images, then how could they fly through a tornado in Oklahoma? The fastest moving tornado in history, uh, the, I believe, oh gosh, I don't have the year here, darn it all, but there was a... There was a, a, the world's fastest known to mankind tornado in Oklahoma, and boom, there goes a rod flying to the middle of it. So let's let's hear the explanation for that one. Okay. It's like it's a bug. Okay. How could that happen? Okay, Mick, Mickey has um, some some theories on this. Go for it. This, okay, let's hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> this, in, this image that you're looking at here. Right. This is where the, they're jumping into a cave, I think. Yeah, or, they're looking at a hole. Yeah, exactly. That's what that was gonna say. Where right. this little man's. I remember this. There. They they're. Uh, Face jumpers. Face jumpers. They, they jump into this hole, and I think it's like in Central America or right. something like that. And they're filming it, and you see this rod kind of go in between them. Right. And now, the be here's the best way to explain this, okay? Um, as humans, okay, we have in our eyes what's called rods and cones, okay? They capture light, different, different stages of light and different stages of color, okay? Now, when we see things... Okay, we, it's called a persistence of vision. Okay, when we see things as they go through, they appear fluid. So we see them as they actually are. With the, you're, you're actually, your brain pauses for a minute and sees it as a fluid motion. Okay, cameras don't see that. Cameras don't have persistence of vision. Cameras move a lot faster than, than like our eyes would and our brains would. And they capture things you're seeing essentially an overlapped still image of an object that's flying through the air that's faster than the shutter is traveling. That's why you're seeing this rod appear because it is actually, it's an insect. And because of the, the shutter tripping in the, in the camera, mm -hmm. that's unlike our eye, which, you know, our, like I said, our eye is at the persistence of vision. This actually st stops it and then captures it again as it travels. But, and it appears to be elongated. In so, moment. but, okay, um, all the rods that I have seen, I'm gonna put that other picture back up with a four on it. Um, so you're saying then it could be a mosquito or a fly or a moth? Yes, um, <sighs> probably not a mosquito because they're too small. Okay, so, I mean, a so one with wings yeah. like a moth, a butterfly. Uh, a gnat of some mm -hmm. type. 
you know, you had the picture up earlier with the uh, the rod flying next to the plane. Right. Know? It's not next to the plane. It's just closer oh, to it's the closer, land. Oh, it's closer to the land. Yeah. Oh, right. So it looks, it appears bigger. And I'm not the videographer. I don't know what he was, what kind of camera he was using. I don't know what the settings were he was using. Mm-hmm. But when you have a uh, smaller aperture, okay, it'll, it's going to appear closer to the plane because I don't know if he's, if they said, you know, yeah, this thing flew right next to the plane. And there's no way. No. I see what you're saying. No. Um, just all oh, the rods uh, that I've seen, they all look the same, though. I mean, yeah, they do. Well, they they have a similar appeal to them. And flying and insects all have wings. Fact that, that these things are said mm-hmm. to travel between 135 and 200 miles per hour, and are one to six feet long. Um, I, there's an image that I sent your way there, Jeff, of the kid that's sitting mm-hmm. there, and it looks like his ear has become pierced by a rod. <laughs> do you see that one there? I just put it up right now. And, and like, you know, there's a delay, so it, it's up right now. Got We're it. looking at it. So once yeah. it cha- yeah. changes on your screen, but, uh, okay. So, <laughs> so what you're telling me, Mickey, then is, is, is that if I cover up the, the top portion and, and one set of wings, then that's just the bug itself. One that's bug. The bug. Yeah. Why haven't these been like photographed or filmed? you know, a thousand times more than it has been, you know, as of late. Because, I mean, photography's been around for some time. So, I mean, I know that there's some films, uh, you know, where it's reported, like the one that Escamilla has that's from 1910, that shows there being something that looks like a rod. But, you know, you think that this would have happened more often. You know, I, I sent to, your, uh, to you as well, Jeff, of this black ghost knife fish that has a similar type of appendage that kind of flutters along, you know, showing like, you know, in, in nature, it's a possibility that something like this could indeed happen. Uh, the, the show that I sent you the link to for uh, Monster Quest, they had an expert on there for insects, and he said that this is this does not look like an insect, that these things do not fly as, you know, as an insect would. But then, of course, there is the, the other flip side. You know, I swear most of these paranormal shows are called they should be called the bunking shows um that's why they right. just you know rip them apart and oh <laughs> that didn't happen um but uh okay I well mean, so 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 Heidi so check it out so if if we were to be in uh in a room and we threw let's say for example Mickey a fly in the room right and you started taking pictures of this fly all over the place just pictures pictures would, would it turn out like this I don't know if it would turn out like that. Well, not but, like I'm sorry, not like the fish I'm showing now, like but fish. a rod. I don't, I don't know, because I mean, don't we'd have to do some, we'd have to do some experimenting. I mean, I mean, flies. I don't know. Probably more like a dragonfly or a moth. Probably because you have a bigger object to see there. Um, Doesn't that all have to do? Yeah, you'd have to do experimentation. Yeah. You'd have to look at the light, the aperture, the shutter speed. You'd have to see all that and see yeah. how that works. You know, there was a piece of footage that I've I've given to the attention of uh, Jose Escamilla. Um, I did a television series for Discovery Channel called Exops. It never hit the screen. It's kind of a mystery as to why this happened. We got a lot of cool fo- footage. We went down to Roswell uh, because of reports of there being uh, alien ghosts being seen. Right. So we went to the air plane hangar uh, where the bodies were supposedly stored at one point and I mean we were in this hangar and it was probably 10 degrees it was freezing we were shuddering and uh, as they're they're filming you know there was a couple of psychics with us they began to do a seance and I mean just the craziest things took place something was growling things were banging we didn't know what was going on and uh, and all of a sudden, one of our photographers passed out, essentially. And uh, later on, we go to look at the footage, and there is this, like, centipede-looking like creature that, that looked to crawl through the screen. And, I mean, it was just the weirdest-looking thing, and it was soon after that that our photographer passed out. So I don't think a bug could have been around in that, those freezing temperatures, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very much a, on the on the boat of uh, a believer of 
some of these things not always being explained because, wow, did we get something crazy. And I'm hoping that Jose gets a hold of this footage that uh, uh, the producer that was for the show <laughs> actually was the producer for X-Files. So um, we're hoping that he gets uh, and, and analyzes that footage because, so that's a bunch of bugs? my goodness. Mm-hmm. Bunch of bugs. Okay, so now I got the next photograph up right now that has oh, there you go. all of them on there. So you're yeah, saying that's then a- that's an assortment of gnats or bugs then? Some kind of flying But they bug. all look the same to me. Why is that? Because they're probably all the, all similar, the same type of, bug. type of bug. Yeah. And if you count them all, look at the, if you look at the rods, okay, they're all traveling from right to left, okay? What's that big light center in the what middle? What the hell? How do you distinguish that? <laughs> okay. They're all flat. They're all. I mean, they're all. Looks like they're all traveling in the same direction. Okay, but look at that in the very center. That one. That one. Yes. Well, it looks like it's coming this way towards yeah. us. Yeah. So it doesn't appear as a rod. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if, if you, you know, and then if, there's something called ghost rods as well. You know that don't have these kind of look, looking like fluttery like appendages on the side. So the ghost rods are, are really fascinating to me. I think I've they're more like orbs taken off, you know? I've never seen a uh, Oh, I'm just, I'm just looking at the TV right now, and New England just stole it. Just uh, oh, not, no, not stole no, it. Don't say that. New England just uh, intercepted, intercepted the Seattle and the one-yard line. No, I'm all for Russell Wilson because he played for the Wisconsin Badgers. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm a Packers fan. Can't help myself. But, Holy uh, smoke! So okay. Well, yeah. As for, far as far as the rods go, I, I guess to Mickey at this point in time, you would have to prove to me, get a bug, go and start taking a million pictures and see if you can make it look like a rod. There was actually something done on that. I remember. Oh, this was years ago because I remember I was little, but I remember they actually did it. They had a high speed camera uh-huh. and they were looking in this area that they were had that was populated by these bugs and they were taking pictures. Just one after the other, one after the other. And they had light and everything. They tried doing different experimentations. And they came back with all these similar shapes, which would be those rods. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've taken a camera course, too, in high school. And, I mean, I'm not saying that's like, makes me a specialist or anything because it doesn't. But we had actually talked about this. So, I mean, for me, for hmm. me, rods have never been something, like, that I would deem paranormal. Yeah. Unless, like, just, something it, just was... It's very weird. Yeah. Weird no, looking. It, it, it's strange. cool. I mean, yeah. you could do so much with cameras. It's it's unbelievable. But, yeah, right. we experimented with cameras that whole class. Right. No. No, yeah. I, I've heard about rods for a long time, and, and to this day, I don't know what they are. I mean... Yeah. I mean, sometimes... I mean, okay, potentially. But I, you know, I've, I've personally experienced, uh, you know, something coming through the room that it was just impossible for there to have been a bug to survive those temperatures, you know, and uh, no dust, you know, nothing. I mean, it was I'd, weird. I'd like to see that was, video. I would, I'd see, yeah, see you I know, I, I put like uh, Jose it. on it to, to have a look and hopefully uh, he could get in touch with uh, the producer of that where, the television the, the, the video you're talking about, Heidi, where is it? you have it or? I do. I, you know what? I do actually have a copy, but I... You know, I'd have to get a hold of the producer to see if I'm at liberty to, oh. you know, disclose it, you know, right, because right, it, okay. it is something that is still kind of being shopped around. It was to oh. be on the sister show to Mythbusters, you know, okay. about seven years ago, right. and we came across some really cool uh, information, and all of a sudden they shut the production down. It was really freaky. They put a lot of money into it, and... I, I saw it. it. I, I saw that when uh, Ruben Yorte showed it at the... Uh, yeah. And um, I, I remember that, and... Yeah. Do you, do you think they shut it down because you guys found something? I am really suspicious of that because suddenly, you know, you know, there's just a, a lot of rumors that I don't personally have, you know, a direct uh, um, interactions with these people to know that this is what was said and this is what was ha- what happened. So I don't want to throw stuff out there, you know, without knowing for certain. But right. a lot of different speculations have been put out there as to why they shut this down. I mean, we're talking about private jets. We had, uh, you know, uh, we had gear. We have a $500 watch that was given to us that had the emblem of the show. I mean, just crazy stuff promoting the show. And Yank didn't get back to this X-Files uh, producer. You know, <laughs> the Discovery shut him down like, boom, we don't know you. What was that? It, not a phone call return. It was odd. It was really odd. There's, so a fight. Like, There's a massive fight going on right now in the Super Bowl, guys. 
massive fight. Oh, look at this. Man. Look at this. Yeah. Woo! Oh well, I don't know if you have that. time for one of these. Yes, these absolutely. Absolutely. Go, go for it. Go for it. All right. Do you want a big one or a little one? It doesn't matter. Whatever you got. Okay, all right. So, okay, this one I've been holding on to for a bit because it's kind of a big, juicy one. Okay, this is Dear Heidi. So I decided to tune into a paranormal podcast this evening between you and Howard Hughes. Whilst, oh, wow, this is from across the pond, while stitching. And the discussion came up about shadow people. Of course, I've heard of them before, and I've heard of descriptions on their varied appearances. One described them as wearing hats, kind of a fedora style. This got my attention because it reminded me of an extremely scary incident I had as a child in bed at night. As a kid, I thought there was a bad man, ghost thing, in my bedroom. It freaked me out. It was always kind of half hidden by the curtains, and I used to try to pretend it wasn't there by keeping my eyes shut. I can't remember how long or how often it would be there, just distinct memories of it happening pretty regularly. I didn't talk about it to anyone because I was too afraid and didn't want my siblings to laugh at me. Oh, don't we know how, how, how that feels? <laughs> it was always wearing a hat, a fedora-style hat, although at times I just thought it was an odd hat because as a kid I had no idea of names of hats. I could still see the image in my head. He was always wearing a black kind of cloak as well, although it was not a billowing kind of cloak. <clears throat> I could never make out the features of its face. And it was always in shadow, and I do not recall seeing red eyes at all. But one particular night, I was convinced I saw movement at the end of my bed, like this thing was crawling around the side of my bed up towards me. Okay, I got chills. <laughs> uh, I was absolutely terrified, I screamed bloody murder, and hid under the covers. It wouldn't stop screaming or come out from under until the lights were on and my dad was there. I was so scared, I didn't care at that point what anyone thought of me or being ridiculed. I was so convinced something was crawling up towards me. Dad had to hunt the whole bedroom for me. I was sobbing by this time. <clears throat> and he and uh, leave the bedroom door propped wide open with a heavy stone. <laughs> it was funny. Okay, this <laughs> image has been a regular feature of dreams my whole life since then. It is always outside the home I am in. In a dream, but trying to get in... It moves around to all the windows to try and get a glimpse at me. I am urgently but easily moving around, making sure the windows and doors are locked, and even the net curtains are covering the windows. So I can't see exactly where I am in the house. In the dream, I must make sure that it doesn't know I'm in the house. I think a couple of times it did, but I woke up at that point. I don't seem to get these dreams as often now. Oh, please don't let me have them now. So anyways, back to the evening. To, to this evening. Out of curiosity, I decided to Google images of shadow figures and was startled when I found the two images that I've attached here. The black and white image really, really freaks me out. That kind of sends chills down my spine because they look like the images I believe I saw as a kid. Uh, for anybody who wants to see the images, they're actually on my website, um, HeidiHollis.com. Just click the Hat Man uh, tab there. Uh, I believe as uh, as a kid, because these were the same images, that's what they sent me, were my own drawings, so I figured, why why do anything with them? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so I'm like, they're on my website. Um, I saw as a kid, and the images that still, though not as often, present themselves in my dreams. The other thing I wanted to mention was an incident from 18 to 20 years ago. My two little kids were tucked in bed, and I was preparing a curry for my husband and I. Hubby was downstairs listening to music, and my back was to the stairs, I had this incredibly strong feeling that someone was behind me, and I assumed that my husband had crept up the stairs to pull a prank on me and jump. I was in no way thinking of spooky things, just must mundane things, chopping onions and listening to the background music from downstairs. I remember turning around with a chopping knife still in my hand, mouth open to say something to my husband like, ha, I gotcha, you thought you were going to make a jump on me. At the same moment I did that, I distinctly remember seeing a shadow outline of a man. Arms were hanging down by its sides, and the shoulders were pretty broad. It was directly facing me and just standing there at the top of the stairs, about six feet away from me. I remember it being full size and close, and the fact that it was looking right at me, even though I could not make out any facial features. I saw a shadow outline because it was all just a gray shadow. I don't remember being able to see through it to the stair railings behind it, though. The shadow looked solid, but was 
still just like a shadow, an outline. I could not make out any details as to clothing or facial features. It was a shadow. I was so scared, I just began screaming for my husband, still standing there with this knife. <laughs> I was crying and shaking by the time my husband heard me and came up the stairs. The shadow was only there for a split second, but it was there. What I am not sure of was if it was my imagination that produced an image because I was so sure my husband was sneaking up on me. Or was it truly an entity that my sixth sense had picked up on? And I don't think I have a strong sixth sense, which caused me to turn around at the moment and see the shadow. I have had occasional paranormal things happen to me, and my family has also experienced odd things, some which could be explained away, but others which we accept as being unexplainable. My husband does have a strong psychic sense, but has buried it due to a very negative experience he has had with a teenage, as a teenager with his friends with a Ouija board. Oh, dear God. He has never allowed Ouija boards in our home and does not like to talk about, much about paranormal entities and such in fear of attracting them. I have been intrigued and interested in all things paranormal for years, but I also try to have a healthy, skeptic view. I don't assume straight away that something is paranormal. I try to rationalize or debunk it when I can, but some things I just can't figure out how to explain. Anyways, many thanks, Lorraine. Wow. That was cool. a big, juicy one. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. My goodness, I, that is a, you know, it, it, just for those people who don't know, this is a, an entity that I, I've called the Hat Man. Um, I do have a book on this topic of the Hat Man, and he is something that I had mistakenly called and distinguished as being a shadow person at one point. I call him the Shadow Hat Man. And um, so this this guy, you know, it's just so funny, Jeff. This, this guy is such a pain in people's backside. If he can't get at you physically... He'll come at you in your dreams. I mean, what a what a numbskull. I mean, really, he's just he's such a. I don't even know how to say to people. It's like you're trying to get along with in your life. You think you've gotten rid of this creepy thing crawling up your bed, and and he does the creepy crawly like you know head twisting thing like uh, the what is it? Exorcist. Oh, that Stephen King like it. Oh. What was it? Uh, was it called the thing or was it it that clown? The way he oh. was like a spider like it, the way it, he crawled along. It. Yeah, it was it. It was it, yeah. And this hat man likes to distort himself like that and just really terrorize kids and, and adults. But, right. man, it, it's such a, a typical thing that uh, people report. Once they get rid of him out of their house, he will come in their nightmares for years, hmm. for years. It's just creepy. It's horrible. But, uh, you know, I commend this person for sharing their story in okay. regard to this um, okay. I'm kind of losing my voice once again. I'm still trying to kick this freaking bug, Jeff. It's so ridiculous. But <laughs> um, uh, um, um, Mickey, just, Mickey, you had something to say? Yeah, I, I was just asking if we were on a time limit because no. I've, I've actually got a couple of stories I could tell you yeah. about shadow people, and I had my own experience with a Ouija board that will oh, wow. blow your oh. socks off. Oh, yeah. You know what? Before you, before you, um, we'll let Heidi go when you talk about that. But okay. Heidi, yeah, since, yeah. since we got you on, um, have you ever heard of? What are they called? Night terrors? Um, uh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I've, I've heard I've heard that, and um, I mean, having you know named the shadow people phenomenon and named the hat man phenomenon, uh, I have been thrown that forever. You know, night terrors, sleep paralysis. Yeah, you know, well, let's talk about that only because, you know, my son, Christian, has had them when he has had high fevers. Okay. Uh -huh. um, but recently he had a high fever and he didn't have the fever anymore, but he still had the night terrors um, a couple days afterwards. And for all those don't, who don't know what, what we're talking about, uh, if, if you've had young kids, I, I've heard actually adults have these things too, but they'll all of a sudden wake up and they'll actually be awake or their eyes will be open and they're screaming bloody murder like if they're looking at something and they're crying and they're shaking just uncontrollably and you can't really um you know it it scares you it's scary it's scary um my son has had these at a young younger age even today he's you know he's a fourth grader and he still has them but what the problem is though is I don't remember ever getting these when I was a kid because what happened is is he was at my parents' house this past week when he got a fever and he had a night terror in front of my parents. It scared them to death because they had no idea 
what that was. Me growing up, my two sisters growing up, we never had these when we were kids. I had high fevers, but right. I would hallucinate, but I wouldn't go into spaz mode like my son does. Mm. And it's it's new to me, and I'm going, well, wait a minute. Why are these happening now? Did they happen back then as well? Because I've never heard of them. Emerald, I know you want to say something. Um, I think he could see. I think he has what I have. But See, it's that's... only prevalent with his fever because you lose control. When I get really sick, uh -huh. I lose control. I have no control over what I'm able to see or what I could stop from seeing. Okay. N now, check it out. He, she mentioned to another teacher at, at her school that he was experiencing night terrors. Now, he seen, my, my, my son sees things crawling up the walls and demons. Now, what's weird is that my wife was talking about this to another teacher and she goes you know my son does exactly the same thing but he'll get out of bed with his eyes open and he'll be screaming like he's trying to kill these things in his room and his eyes are wide open and but not all the kids have these night terrors people google them uh and it, this is very bizarre to me because like i said i never had them when i was a kid i don't recall talking to anybody ever who had experienced this when they were kids, but now they're happening and we're actually finding out, you know what, it's not only our son that this is happening to, no. it's other right. people who's having the same situations happening to their kids. Um, even adults are now experiencing these. And I wanna know why now? Why didn't it happen to all of us back in the 70s or 60s when I was growing up? I never heard of no. night terrors. But now you hear them all over the place. Why is that? Yeah, it, it really seems like the veil is growing thin. And, and you know, the phenomenon that, that I've been uh, researching for years now when it comes to shadow people and uh, the hat man phenomenon, these sightings have, have shifted, okay? It, it's gone from, okay, my interest started off in ghosts. Right. And then it went to the alien topic. And then it went to when I named the shadow people, I have been slammed for years ever since. And then the hat man. It, it went from 100% alien questions to 100% shadow people questions. The second I put the hat man image up, I'd say 90% of my questions that get sent to me are about him. I have a book on Jesus encounters too, but I don't, I don't get nearly as much. The, the incidents of, of these dark masses, these dark creatures showing up, worldwide from thailand to canada you know it's like it is it's phenomenal and it's terrifying and it's scary i think these things are stepping up their onslaught and uh, but what's nice and interesting to see as well though is that sightings and visions of jesus are on the rise as well so it's not just you know the darkness creeping forward the light is creeping forward as well and it's almost like a, and I know people who have seen both and experienced both and not just coming from a sleep, sleeping state, uh, but, you know, walking through their living room and boom, you know, there's this thing there. So it's, it's well, not, uh, I think when people are, are in that sleep state, I think they're more able to see things more clearly and their soul is screaming out, wake up now. And, and they're kind of able to still see through the well, veil a little bit better. What, what, what I think. Yeah, what, what I'm, what also, what I think, and and you brought it up, Emerald. I think sort of, kind of, is that the fever is opening up something yeah. that well, where they can see in it something. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, the third eye well, or the penile lose, gland. You lose control. Like I have full control over mine when I'm not sick. But if I get really sick, and I get really sick, maybe about once every year or two years, mm -hmm. then everything's out the door. I won't go to school that day. Just I will stay in my room because I know once I walk out, everything's there because I lose control of it. Hmm. But these dark things also like to take advantage when we're at our weakest. So, yes, they will creep around at okay, night. Yes, okay. they will come when you're ill. Yeah, they'll come around when you're injured or you're angry or you're upset or you're drunk. So this is... Oh, I see where you're going. I see, I see where you're going with this. So yeah. when you're... When you're, you're your disadvantaged yeah when you're let down when you're weak you're high, have a high oh, fever yeah. you're hallucinating then they'll then you can okay well yeah but yeah yeah but, but like i said though i don't recall 
night terrors. They even have a name for these night terrors. You know, you Google it; they're there. Night terrors. Right. And and you know, when you go to the doctor and you take them, because if this happened to your child for the very first time, it is scary. It scared the crap out of me when when Christian first this happened to him many years ago, and I freaking freaked because I saw my son, and and I couldn't do anything. I could not do a single thing to 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 comfort him. It was right. just oh god, and horrible. yeah, it's very horrible. And it just happened two days ago, three days ago, you know. And it, it, it you know he went to sleep, and not more than an hour later, he's screaming. And you know we're running up the stairs and we're going to his room and there he's shaking. He's just he's, just, he's like like it's minus five degrees outside. He's shaking so bad. He has tears coming down and, and his eyes are wide open, and he's looking at something, and it's like you know obviously we don't see what he's looking at, but it's wow. It's like I don't recall this when we were growing up. Why you know, now? It started with him being ill. I wonder if he saw something. And these shadowy, dark, negative things really, really don't like when you see them. And they will turn their attention towards you if you're somebody who has spotted them oftentimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people will send me emails like, you know, I saw the shadow thing at the end of the hall, and it seemed to turn around and look at me and charge at me. And this is this is actually a pretty uh, a common thing. So maybe that's why... They're on their, uh, he's on their radar, and it may not help that he's your kid. Well, you know, I, I, I want, because <laughs> we have an avenue here to get out to the masses, I want right. people, I want people out there who are watching this show or listening on Art Bell right now, if you have had kids or if you have relatives or adults who have had the same experience and they're called night terrors, and, and if, if you, the way I described my son acting, if you ever had that or a son had that, I want you to let me know. Can you go to our website, paranormalcentral.net? There is a forum there. I want you to tell me your story. And please, you guys, I don't want you guys to make up crap, all right? This is just the people who you know really had these experiences. I want to know what you guys are experiencing as well and see if, if it's exactly like Mike Christian, it, it, the way he's tripping out. Because it is just, you know, I should have recorded him. Wow. But, but because it's it's that crazy. It it's is that, that crazy. It is, is it that still crazy. going on? Um, the, the last one was about two nights ago. But see, he had the fevers uh, last Wednesday, and he calmed down, and he and, and he didn't have a temperature anymore. But, you know, Cheryl was seems to think that that his lack of sleep he was so, so exhausted so tired because he, he started going he went to school baseball practice and he was still in that mode where he was so exhausted that you know he wasn't back to his normal routine again yeah. and 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 it hit him again because it usually only hits him when he has fevers this he didn't have a fever this time but he was and, still getting over it that's what i was yeah. telling cheryl inside yeah so i you know, I don't know. It's just it's just a very weird experience, and I want to hear from all you out there who have kids who have had night terrors. I want you to to describe to me what they are witnessing, what what they are telling you afterwards. Because we pull them aside and we try to tell them, I go, Christian, what did, what were you looking at? And 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 he's trying to describe it, but he can't. At one point in time, when he was younger, he said, at the corner there was bug black bugs crawling up the walls and stuff and he would you know how babies sometimes when they're young they're they're looking in their bedroom and they're crying and they're, and they're just looking at the corner this is what he was doing and he was pointing and he was shaking and he was screaming you know and his eyes are wide open it's a trip so i want to know from you guys out there if this has happened in your family and i want you to describe what your daughter or your son it's going through because I want to. I want. I want to get. I don't want to say I want to get to the bottom of this, but I want to know a little bit more about this because it's intriguing. Because I, I, you know, me and Cheryl have witnessed this firsthand, and it's some scary stuff. So, and adults, adults. Yeah, I, I know. Well, I actually so. know somebody who knows yeah. an adult, and this is happening on a constant basis, and they're in their fifties. Oh gosh, it, you okay. know, and see my my experience, my personal experience with these shadowy beings and, and shadow spiders is I. You know, I'm dreaming of them, and I'm waking up to them, but I'm I'm experiencing them continuing. And uh, a lot of people that have experienced the hat man, 
you know, are dreaming about him, they wake up and he's an inch from their face. So is this an ongoing night terror or is he really, you know, there? Right. And it, but it's, it's such a particular looking guy this and is, particular looking shadowy thing. So right. can we all be hallucinating the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> now, now I made a comment and Cheryl laughed at me, but Uh-oh. you know, Christian is into the video games and he's into, you know, he has my iPad and he's watching, he's on Netflix and he's watching these scary, you know, goosebump ones and all this. Is it maybe that that's triggering it? And Emerald is shaking her head and said, no, no, it isn't no, that. So, so, okay. No, too many kids that are playing and doing all that stuff too. And um, nah. By the way, he's a very cute kid. I, I saw a picture of Okay, right on. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right, Heidi, we're going to let you go. Yep. Um, I'm going to talk yep. to Mickey here. So, all right, we'll see you next week, okay? Sounds good. Have a great day. Thank night. you, Heidi. Talk, Catch talk you later. Talk to you later, okay. Heidi. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Now, Mickey, you had a couple of, uh, you said a story. Yeah. Um, it, they're shadow men. Or uh-huh. Shadow, shouldn't say shadow men. Shadow people okay. uh, stories. Um, now, tell, yeah. tell now, the, re- the reason why I came into known Mickey is Mickey also has a hobby aside to what he does on the side. I mean, you are a paranormal investigator, sort of, right? I, I used, used to, to be. Used to be an investigator of the paranormal. I, I looked into ghost stories okay. and ghosts and this and that and the other thing. And what caught, what made me interested in this was growing up, we had some occurrences happen in our house that were unexplainable. Okay. And one of those were the shadow people. Okay. And uh, my mother... Uh, saw them several times and the one the one that sticks out of my mind which which terrified her to death was she was out um, in our uh, area we had the washing machine and they were she was out there doing laundry and she she turns around the, and we had the the laundry uh, uh, the wash and dryer were in the garage and the garage doors up and she said she she loaded things and she turned around and when she turned around she said she was she saw this black figure um about six feet tall in a running stride and it looked straight at her and was there one second and then next second was gone this happened there were several occasions that that these things appeared you know i mean and they would they would range from anywhere from two feet tall to six feet tall you know six feet being the the tallest which was that one that she saw in in the uh in the garage. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I, I had never seen anything. Okay? I, I never experienced visually in the house. Okay, we heard I heard stuff. Heard knocking in the center of my bedroom, on the ceiling. You know, one morning, um, I had been touched, which I believe was my my grandmother grabbing my my foot as I was asleep. You know, I believe you know I believe that was that was my grandmother coming back and 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 paying a little visit. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, had never had any visual, okay, of anything. Um, this has been a couple of years back. This has been quite a few years ago now. Um, I had gone out to the house. And the house, uh, my brother resides in there now. My parents have, they've moved. They, they, they live out of, out of the city now and live in another part of the, part of the county. Um, so, but my brother still resides there. And I was, um, bringing his stepdaughter's baby some clothes that had that my kids had outgrown and I still had around and I was just kind of doing some hand-me-down stuff right paranormal was the furthest thing from my mind okay I'm there nobody's home okay I thought crap I'll just I'll I'll uh, I'll come in and just drop the stuff off and then be on my way you know my kids are in the car you know so I take the bag of clothes and I and I you know, make our secret way in, and I and I, and I go in um, through the through the back door. Excuse me, I, I went in there first and turned on the lights because nobody was there. I just wanted to you know kind of make sure everything was 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 cool. Mm-hmm. Again, paranormal was the furthest thing from my mind. Right. Okay. Go out, grab the clothes, come back in, and open the back door. And just as I opened the door, straight on view, full view. It wasn't like a seen out of the corner of my eye or anything like that it was a straight on view um a shadow figure sitting at the dining room table okay when you walk in there's a counter and then there's the dining room table okay shadow figure is sitting at the dining room table if the camera is me mm-hmm. viewing this way this is how this thing was sitting at the table like this okay if this is the table 
Okay. Like that. And it was looking straight at me. And again, it was there. One second. And, and, and you can see the facial features. No, it was just facial dark. Feature, it was a dark figure leaning on the table. Looked like as if it was looking at me like this. Mm. And scared the crap out of me. And I just I came in. And at that point, paranormal entered my mind. Right. You know, I was like, because I was, you know, kind of, I was just getting into it at that point. Okay. And... I was like, okay. So I put the stuff down, sat there and listened for a minute, you know, and, and just, you know, tried to make a little more contact with it and no more. And so, I well, did, did you think that maybe it was somebody who, who had broken into it? Did, did that come into mind Absolutely at all? Absolutely not. No. no when I opened the door, it was, like I said, it was a matter of a, it was one one second. One second it was there. Next second it was okay. gone. Okay. okay. It's not like I had a chance to, to think, initiate, you know, confrontation right. or anything like that. It was just a there and then gone. Okay. So. Now, did you have any people die at that house? I no. Mean, my my parents or my father, um, my grandparents owned the land, mm -hmm. and they subdivided and my, gave my parents part of the land, and, they, and my dad built the house there. Mm -hmm. However, the, the land is built on uh, where a natural pond used to be. They drain the pond, they put vineyards in. Okay. And my mom has speculated that, you know, perhaps this is like some kind of an old watering hole where the, where the Indians would come from, the, the American Indians would come from the mountains because there, there are squaw holes up in uh, uh, the Bass Lake area mm -hmm. okay, where they, they found them up there. Maybe they were traveling, you know, south and came across the natural pond they used it for watering hole camp there whatever you know did somebody die there we don't know right okay um found an interesting interesting thing did happen though when they were building the house um they dug a well okay they had, they had to dig a well at when they when they got down i think it was like 70 feet or whatever however deep it was they pull up a redwood stump a what a redwood stump this is the valley floor. Oh, redwood. A redwood well, stump. But but we have redwood trees here though. Not on the valley floor. We're talking about Easton. Okay. <laughs> so redwood being down here, we're like what? No, they pulled up a stump. It was a redwood stump. So seventy feet down? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know how, right, right, how right. deep it was because that was before I was even born. Okay. Um, but they, you know, they dug down, found the water, and you know there was the the stump that was there. Hmm. So. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Oh God, I was just gonna say something too. I forgot. Crabola. So okay. All right. Um, let's talk about your pictures. Do you want to talk about the Ouija board first? Oh, okay. Let's do the Ouija board. The, we got thirty Ouija... minutes left, so we, okay. we got enough time. Okay. We got, we got enough time. All right. Um. Now what the Ouija. heck are you doing messing with the Ouija board? Hey, this was this was early on again. Dude, we've the all done it. Thing. I it's, haven't. Hey, you I know what? I'm okay. This is no. how I described it when I was doing paranormal stuff. Okay, a spiritual chat room. You don't know who you're gonna get coming across. All right. Okay. Right. They're not so much evil as they are a a. It's almost like logging on to a chat room. You don't know who's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're getting you're getting evil you're getting good you're getting this you're getting that you don't know what it is that's coming across mm, yeah. scare the crap out of me but yeah, go ahead they're, they're good they're, you know, I shouldn't say good they're they're just a, an avenue to talk to the dead exactly yes well okay, okay. well here's here's my story okay right. and this is what made me an ab I was I was dumbfounded by this okay. I, I, and I was to this day I'm still a believer in this okay all right we go to San Diego we go into a Wiccan store down down there, and it's a it's a good Wiccan store. It's not like a you know, a, you know, one where they just sell incense and you know, chicken feet and this and the other thing. You know, they they actually sell it was authentic Wiccan stuff. And I came across this Ouija board. It was like ninety bucks, okay, and it was really neat. I'd never seen it before. It was round, had a round planchet, you know, and it was it was cool, you know. So I thought I'm buying this thing, you know. So we bought it, you know, take it home. We've had it for a while, you know, and we we everybody says they dabble in it. Well, we dabbled in it, okay, and we had a party one evening, and we had we had a few friends over, and uh, we're sitting there. We're we're 
I'm there and my ex-wife is there and we're, we're using this board. You know, we're getting all this, you know, you know is this going to happen? Yes, no, you know. Right. All kinds of weird questions you can ask. Okay. And uh, I was, our friend Keith was writing stuff down as, as, uh, as it was coming through. Well, um, Keith said, I want to, I want to give it a try. So we're like, all right, so I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll take a break. You, you take over and I'll write the stuff down, you know? So I went and I was, you know, went and got something to drink. I'm writing stuff down. And, uh, my ex and Keith are using this board, you know? Now, here's where it gets a little weird. Okay. Says that this spirit of a, I think it was like a nine, nine, 10, maybe 11 year old boy came through. Okay. And don't even know the name, you know, and it said that he died on the property. Okay, so so you guys are asking questions, and then the thing is moving. The thing is moving, And yeah. he's writing and down these I'm, letters. I'm writing the things down as Keith and my ex are going over the board. Okay. okay. And I go, okay, you know, died on the property. All right, go ahead. You know, let's, never heard of that one, you know. Now, my house is built in 40. Four or forty-five. It's po- just a post-war house, so it's kind of you know. Where you're at right now? Where, this is my old. Oh, house. your old house. My Got old it. House. And it's in the old Fig Garden of Fresno, which is a very extremely. It's a very old area. Okay. okay. Um. Anyway, the kids, the child spirit, um, said that he died on the property, and I go, okay. And I'm like, so they they asked, him, well, how did you die? And he said he drowned. And I go, drown. Okay, that's okay. You know, so, and they, I go, ask it how he drowned. And, he, and they said, well, how did you drown? And it says, I drowned in the river. Okay. And right then, I, and it, it, it clicked with me. I was like, wait a second. I go, ask it what kind of river. And they ask it. And it spells out canal. I'm like, Stop. Now, I have no contact with the board. I am not touching the board. I'm not touching Keith. I'm not touching my ex. Nothing. I have no contact with this board whatsoever. I go, everybody, stop. Stay here. I got something to show you. I run into my office, go through my files, and I grab out my old uh, appraisal for my property. Okay. My ex has no clue. She's, she, we were, you know, I don't even... I, I think this was prior to us being even being married. She had no idea of this. I know this for a fact. She had no idea of this. I pull out the old assessor's map from 1940s. Mm-hmm. Okay, running through my backyard is a canal. In the 1960s, they moved it across the street. Ah. Divided the land, deeded the the land where the canal ran through right. to the people who owned the house at the time, and moved the canal, moved it underground. And I was like. You guys got to see this. And I showed them, and they just, they turned white. They were like, oh, my God. And I was like, yep. Now, did you ask, did they find the body? Or, I mean, I, I think you were freaked out. You guys were freaked We were, you, you, we you were, were at done. that point, we were like, oh, we, we're, we're done. done you know? We're done. And the weird thing about it is the board disappeared. We don't know where it went. Oh, what? I was going to ask that. It disappeared. Most of those real boards... You can only use them once or twice, and then I've heard stories that they just disappeared. And it was gone. We, I looked high and low for that thing. In that house? And it was, in the house. Nobody I, took, moved, nobody took moved, it? Nobody took it, and it was weird because it was round, and it was, we kept it. It was in a what looks like a pizza box, but it wasn't. It was it was like a, just a plain box mm-hmm. that I kept it. Kept it in a certain spot. Gone. gone. Whoa. Yeah, I've heard that before. Thank you very much for showing up. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> And happy nightmares. And that's why I don't play with Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> right there. So, uh, okay. Yeah. That's my Ouija board story. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's not liking you right now. They're cussing you out in check and Probably. now they have to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's change the subject a little bit and uh, get the, uh, the evil ghost stuff out of your head. Yeah. Last week... Mickey called. Oh, actually, we called him, or he called us. I don't remember. I called you. You called, and he was all excited because you are a photographer. Where were you at? I was at Pine Flat Lake, uh-huh. Well, which is now a dry lake because of the drought. It's, yes. We are in extreme drought conditions. It hasn't rained. It's rained one time in this month, and yeah, that's we've had nothing. Much, yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's not, not, not a very uh, 
pretty situation that we're in. Right. Uh, dry lake bed up in, in Pine Flat. Well, on Pine Flat Lake bed um, is the old Trimmer Springs area, which was the, the small community of Trimmer Springs. And they had, it was a, like a logging community, and they, they had sloughs and, and all kinds of things there. General store. They had a hotel there, I found out. Okay. Um, and where I was at was where the jail is, which is where I, I caught the, kind of the, got that creepy feeling. Okay. Like we talked about that right, a while right. back. I think it was Bigfoot. But yeah. I think and it was Bigfoot big looking big at you. But anyway, go ahead. All right. So anyway, um, I'm down there at the uh, the Old Trimmer Springs Jail with, with my fiance. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is that over there? We, I'm looking and they had these look like pylons or whatever they are. They, they had in the area cordoned off. So I, okay. I walk over there and I'm looking around. I don't see anything. You know, and I look and I find this hole in the ground. And... And I tell Debbie, I said, come here, you got to check this out. And it was a trip, okay? Okay, what I'm putting up right now on the screen is one shot, and I'm going to zoom out on it so that way you can see the whole shot, even the background. And go ahead and and describe everybody the back first. What's this? Uh, What you're seeing there is the old Trimmer Springs Jail. That's the remains of the jail. Okay, so if Pine Flat had water in it, Mm -hmm. would all this be underwater? Yes, it'd be about... uh, 70 to 100 feet underwater okay. okay okay so we have you know the old building that's there um this is all underwater normally okay, okay. because the lake is 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 full okay. okay now this hole is probably i'm i want to say it was like 20 30 yards west of the old jail okay, okay. and this hole in the ground is about three feet wide okay, okay. and i look inside and you're gonna pull, he's going to pull up the next I'm one here. Pull up okay. that. This is the first photo that I took okay, of, of the inside of it. Okay, And what you're looking at there, what looks to be stairs going down. Oh, okay. okay. Like a round staircase maybe? Like a round staircase, uh, yeah. So I get the idea. I'm going to drop my camera in there. When I say drop my camera in there, I mean hold on to the strap, right. turn the self-timer on, drop it in, and take some pictures. And I'll let you show them what the next picture is. So the next picture, uh, which one do you want me to, do you want me to show, uh, that one? Uh, that's no? one of them there. Okay. That was, that was just inside. Um, that one, that one. That's okay. Well, one. let's, um, I, I sent Jeff several. Images. There's the one right there. Okay. okay. That's, there's, it's some kind of a subterranean basement room. I don't know what it is. Um, not sure what it is it's some kind of building that was there um was either torn down this right. um somebody said it could have been a root cellar to the jail but this it's too far to be the, the root cellar to the jail it was it was too far away um i've got somebody looking into finding out what maybe what building was west of there mm-hmm. but it was really strange i mean this is normally underwater now that all that wood is preserved i yeah. mean i'm looking at that wood dude and th- this is what I'm thinking. Is, do you see this uh, clay? Uh, it's actually, you know, it, um, I, I think the water. I don't know how do I don't explain I don't this. I mean you. that. I mean, they could be stairs. I'm thinking that could be part of what was the ceiling to this room. Okay. Could be or it just caved in. Right. But. Very cool. I don't know. It's cool. I thought, it, I mean, it was about, I want to say it's about between three to five feet deep. I didn't want to get in there and it, and it cave in further and me not be able to get out and get stuck. Whatever. And, hey, Debbie's like, don't you jump in that <laughs> hole. And I was like, I'm like, I'm not. So, and I didn't want to risk it either. Right. Right. No. But uh, I, I did manage to get my camera past that first board and. There's more but, wall down, but there wasn't much. I mean, you couldn't see much further see, than, than um, a few inches. Wood, wood being in, in water for a long time, it, it, because Pine Flat Lake has been there for a long time. And, yeah. you know, so I'm thinking this thing has been filled up with water for a long time. Shouldn't have that all just been. Being <sighs> fresh water, I don't know how maybe somebody else out there may, may can be able to answer this for you about uh-huh. fresh water versus salt water breaking down wood um huh. 
I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I found it so interesting. I mean, I was like, whoa, this is like a, a hidden underground room or right, something. Right, exactly I mean, I was what like, it is. Man, what is this thing? Wow. Now, my next question on that is, why Milton Lake, Pine Flat Lake, why are all of these lakes that I'm aware of have cities in them towns in them i don't know um i mean i know that they they built um the dams Mm -hmm. um for hydroelectricity but you know what i'm saying they were all on the lake they were they're they're always on the river though so that's one thing to keep in mind is they they built these towns against rivers and when they got the idea of maybe putting a dam there suddenly Mm. these that were against these rivers now are damned yeah, it's going to be covered with water, water. because it's underwater. Because hmm, that's because they got it. To, it's part of the reservoir, now. Right, right? So that may be one reason why that they flood these. Has a Millerton Lake, like you said, right. um, has an underground. Is there's a town under there? It's yeah. Millerton. Yeah. So. Hmm. I don't know. I just found that interesting that uh, they would be underwater, like maybe they're trying to hide something. Yeah. You know me. <laughs> you know me. I'm always guessing and thinking that uh, conspiracy, and that's just me. So. <laughs> so. All right. Well, you know what? We got 15 minutes left for the show. Emerald, uh, anything going on in your life? Uh, Oprah, uh, Hitler. <laughs> this oh. time we want to talk about that. I don't care. Um, hold on, Mickey. Um, <clears throat> we had a guest last week. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Doctor Turi, and um, uh, apparently, uh, you know, Emerald said some stuff, or no, did you? During the show? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, and then and, and obviously, you know, Dr. Turi didn't find it. Um, he didn't like like it, basically. So for those who have been watching us on Facebook, Emerald and Dr. Turi have been going at it. Left I have around. not. No, no, I have okay. not. Okay, well, no, no, no. I take that back. They For the first day, I think. No, it was just that night, the email. The email, right. And then I got an article written about me. <laughs> And, um, so, uh, (laughs) so yeah, so, um, you know, all Emerald was doing was questioning some stuff and that's uh, what, and, and, um, and, uh, Dr. Turi, uh, fired back and, um, I stood back and I just watched, you know, and I just watched all of it go down. Um, and then your mom got involved. Okay. See, I had no idea and I did not (laughs) send her on him. (laughs) Because it was on, I guess, one of the fans posted on my wall. And I was like, oh, that's because I, kn- I didn't even know. Right. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, I didn't think anything <laughs> of it because I knew. I kind of figured. I was like, whatever. So it didn't really bother me. Right. And then I was like, oh, my mom. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but I, I was like, your, I your mom, Your mom went after Dr. Turi. Yeah. <laughs> I missed last week's show. You got to film again. Okay. Oh. Um, it was... <laughs> I don't know. I question everything on the show. I play devil's advocate. That's what I do. And I'll question guests. I have no mm-hmm. problem questioning anybody. Right. Um, and I was just like, okay, well. We had a guest last week. And he yeah. is a, um, uh, um, I don't want to say astro. <sighs> he reads the stars. Yeah. Okay. And um, he can sort of kind of, well, actually, he says he can predict certain dates and events of stuff that are happening. Yeah. Um, and and last I never said he was wrong. Right. And I mean, all, I mean, respect to the doctor, whatever. I never once said that, okay, you're yes. My thing was that if you have like this information, you want to help people, Why then you sure. help people. And I mean, we've had guests like try to contact him for help. And he's like, oh, well, it's $700 for a Skype session. I'm like, you can't do that. Like, that's what I was questioning. I was like, and it wasn't even that I didn't have the services because I couldn't care less. But my thing was you want to help people you help people and maybe that's just my mentality i i don't know i that's not what i do for a living but and that's all it was it was questioning and then that's when the shots started getting fired and i was like i'm not going to argue with you i d- i'm not going to sit here and go back and forth i didn't care one way or the other i was just like you cancel my membership i don't care see um pin and teller came out a few years ago mm-hmm. and we're talking about um, people making these predictions like Nostradamus predicted 9-11 mm-hmm. and the, all these people predicted 9-11 and this and that. Well, why the hell didn't they come forward and say it before it happened? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Okay. If they predicted it, why not come forward and say, hey, you know what? 
and we know something's going to happen, we can prevent it. Why not do it? Because they're full of shit. Sorry. But I'm, it's, yeah. But no, and I, I just, I mean, I kind of laughed it off. And you know I laughed it yeah, off. I was yeah. kind of like, well, he should have let me model for the picture. Use my Facebook picture. And it kind of ruined our thing we had going, like, an emerald sighting. Well, now everybody's seen my picture. <laughs> so there's no reason for me not to get in front of the camera. But, yeah. I, psh, I, like, it's and another thing. Publicity, I don't care. Right, right. So I was just like, whatever. I thought it was funny. My coworkers thought it was funny. So, yeah. so no, everybody was laughing. And, uh, and I just, mean, just, I had people... That from our show basically saying I think you're right and I was like well it's not about that it's just the question you always have to I question everything that's like you one of have my to monitors. be skeptical yeah. if you if you're not skeptical then you're gonna believe everything that you hear exactly. right and right so like I said I thought it was hilarious <laughs> like this I was it going was fu- back it was funny forward. but it's, it was way funnier when your mom got involved and, uh, uh, I was like, and your mom, mom got on there <laughs> started going what mom say uh, well she went back and forth on on uh, on the Facebook. Yeah, Whoa. on his Facebook page, and I was like, I had no idea. Like, I swear, like, uh, <laughs> did, my, my oh. mom texts me, and she's like, I don't like that guy, and, da, 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 and I was like, What are you talking about? And then I saw it, I was like, Oh no, because <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, that's where I get it from. That's funny, but so. I mean, I, it was nice having my mom defend me. That was kind of cool. Yeah. So and uh, <clears throat> so we. <laughs> Cheryl and I were just laughing and just watching it all happen and unfold. And the people on the Facebook were looking at it and they were sending us face, you know. And they're, they're, it was funny. It well, was. Well, that's fun. the thing. Like I didn't even know about it till one of our um, one of our followers had brought it up to my attention. They posted it on my wall, and I was like, <laughs> "What is this?" <laughs> and the funny thing was, all the emails weren't even on there. It was only certain emails. Well, you know how it is when you mm-hmm. tell a story, you tell your side of it. Yeah. So that's how it was. Everything was kind of one-sided and i was like oh that's kind of cute and i mean it's a picture of me holding a cat and right. i'm smiling and i was like i was at the cat house on the king so i mean i was doing volunteer work so you right. should have picked a different picture but i was like oh well <laughs> okay well anyways uh, but that that's what happened uh, um yeah. and we're still actually pr- um waiting for there's supposed to be a prediction of Soon, yeah. the first second or third which is today okay. tomorrow or 24 hours day. or the next day so let's see if something happens do um, we know the, what the prediction is well no, he, well something. check this out he when he two weeks ago no it was the last week no two weeks ago he came on and he said he gave us three dates and said it was going to be a 7.0 and on one of those dates we had a 7.0 and uh so we said okay 7.0 earthquake. earthquake in the world in the or? world in the world there's 7.0 earthquakes all the time. No, not really. And I monitor the earthquakes like really well. And I post up, you know, six, seven, six point fives. Yeah. You know, sevens. There have been sevens a lot lately, but you know, he gave us a three-day window, and it did happen on that three day. Okay. So I said, so we brought him back last week, and I said, okay, I'll give you that one. Then he says, uh, what is your next prediction? And as a matter of fact, I, that paper wasn't right it like the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. He said something bad that was going to capture worldwide news was going there to go. happen. There I wrote yeah. it down right here. It's um, uh, he said on the second oh. of something. May, I, I kinda, um, the second, the twenty first of this month. Um, second twenty first of this month. So so February. tomorrow. So tomorrow something is going to happen either today, tomorrow, or Tuesday because he's given a twenty four hour window, back or forth. So he's saying the second, and and I think he said earthquake on the second. If I'm not mistaken, uh, 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 I think the first one was earthquake, and then the later dates, the 11th, 12th, or whatever those dates were, was like something worldwide news. Yeah, I think that he said the happen. 15th or the 27th of this month. I don't. Remember. There's going to be uh, a major incident, sort of, kind of that like the vein worldwide attention of of um, he said something of the magnitude like of, of when Princess Diana died, something of that magnitude. magnitude. Okay. Yeah. Why not come out and say what it is? He. I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows. He just feels that something major is going to happen. That's just gonna, a feeling. A feeling. Well, yeah. according an to an his to his to his stars and the way they aligned and all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, but like I said, you know that the the seven point oh he nailed it, and I, I, that's why I brought him back. And uh, I, I I had the exact days, and I wrote. I, I know I wrote I wrote him down. It's pretty vague. Yeah. I mean. Oh, where did he go? And I wrote them down. Gosh dang it. What did I do with them? It, it's, all, it's also in the email as well. Okay, so I, I have them. So anyways, uh, so we'll see what happens this week, if anything major. And then I'll go back at the, you know, I mean, at, if at you the can date. say 7.0 is going to happen 
off the coast of Papua New Guinea and it's going to kill 3,000 people. Right. Then that's something to go, then whoa. that's something to go, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. But he just said there's going to be a 7.0 somewhere in the world on this day. And, and, and it did. So, and that's why I brought him back. And yeah, I mean, I gave him that one. I'm like, okay, okay. There's something there possibly. So that's why we brought him back. Um, and then he gave us some more dates. Uh, and now we're going to see. Is he local? No, he's in uh, Arizona, I think. He's in Arizona. So, All right, we got about five minutes left, you guys. Three minutes, according to my woman in the board over there, the dark can- corners of... Uh, Where Hitler hangs out. And Hitler and... Uh, yeah, he, what did Hitler he call, was a Catholic. What, what, what did he call you? What? Atheist. No, 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 what? Oh, he called you Oprah and Hitler, like Hitler right? Hitler and Oprah, or something like that. <laughs> and like, I'm just like, okay, well, they were both religious, and I'm atheist, so I'm kind of like, well, it doesn't match. And I think he only really got mad at me after he realized I was an atheist. You're atheist, <laughs> and, he go, and he goes, well, that's why you're after me. Yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah. okay, whatever. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Like I said, I, I don't care. It was. It uh, was cool. It was. It was a. It was an experience that. Hey, yeah. you know, that's this is this is the what's gonna happen. You know when we're doing this type of stuff. Well, I mean, you've been slammed before by all the Bigfoot stuff too. So oh, I was like, and yeah. but you know what? It's par for the course. But yeah, yeah. there's yeah. Bigfoot right there. But you know what though? All the Bigfoot people are now leaving us alone. Yeah. Because we are coming up with the, this evidence that they're going. What the heck are these guys doing? How are they getting it? And it's because we're investigators. You're an investigator, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, you're going with me up there to go analyze some evidence. And, um, and, uh, and that's just what we do guys. You know, when we're not working, if we see an opportunity to, to do what we're going to do, we're going, we're going. Okay. Just like I did yesterday, you know, after work, I was up there for four hours climbing ladders and putting up cameras and sticky insulation all over me. And, um, so, you know, we do this stuff because you know we love it obviously and um you know we do it for you guys because we want you guys to keep coming back and coming back we want you guys to know what's going on yeah because this stuff is freaking bad you know this is and i'm saying bad this is good you know i'm having a blast so so yeah so all right um mickey thank you very much for popping in like that thanks for having me um hopefully alan will be here next week i'm pretty sure he will because the dude right now is probably <laughs> you know so um hopefully alan if you're good or good better tomorrow i don't know if you're gonna be or not but uh, hopefully you can go with us uh, tomorrow i doubt it but uh i'll fill in let me know you can go with us beyond yes. okay um so all right so um <laughs> yeah we're gonna have a blast next week i'm hoping to have a couple of people on the air talking live uh on the phone uh one person i'm hopefully you're gonna know very well he told me he would call in or we'll get a hold of him you know him like i said very well i'm not going to say who it is because i don't want to give it away because i don't want anybody else to take the the you know him and before we do so all right and then uh and then uh, a friend of mine is going to come on too so all right that's it for uh, jeffrey gonzalez and alan thomas who's back at the uh, house and then mickey burrow and emerald Bonilla. I want to say thank you for showing up today, and uh, I appreciate you hanging out. You know, we're having fun here, man. I'm having a blast. So come back next week. We're going to do it again, and it's only getting better. Good night. Have a good night, and I hope you'll witness something you can not explain. See ya. You have been listening to Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas, broadcasting worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and on ArtBell.com. Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies. And we hope you witness something you cannot explain. Can I begin? We all explain.